kakasesi. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to enter in the first session, I would like to inform you the rules during the webinar. First, Zoom room will be opened 30 minutes before the event starts. Second, participants are required to use the full name as the Zoom ID. Do not use device names or institutional names. Third, microphones can be used only with the approval of the host or co-host. Fourth, the attendance from link will be sent to the chat room 30 minutes before the webinar ends. Participants are prohibited from distributing the attendance from link to others who do not attend the webinar. Fifth, E certificates will only be given to the participants who fill out the attendance form. And for discussion rules, click the raise hand feature. Questions are presented briefly and clearly. Questions can be submitted via chat to the host by writing name, institutions, name of the speaker being asked, and write your question briefly and clearly. And the last, moderator will arrange discussion sessions. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, now we are entering the first session. In this session, we will be led by our moderator, Insignia Genius PhD. First of all, allow me to introduce our moderator, Insignia Genius PhD. I will read his curriculum by the he passed his bachelor at the University of Jimbe and doctoral degree at La Trobe University. His expertise is about food microbiology. For professional experience, he earned 646 rank in national and 5 rank in affiliation for Sinta. So now, please welcome in Senior Jayus PhD. Okay, thank you Adela as a master ceremony, fabulous master ceremony this morning. Thank you very much. Again, welcome to all participants and also, of course, the uh, presenter this morning session. All right, thank you very much for the committee. Uh, allow me to chair this session, this morning session. Uh, to uh, and immunology. <laughs> okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Again, thank you very much for the participant. I saw uh, more than 240 participants attending uh, this webinar, this morning webinar. I think our topic this morning is uh, very demanding since we have an outbreak of COVID-19. Hopefully from this end, we will learn a lot about how to uh, prepare our food which has the immune, uh, immune power uh, to increase our immunity. That's uh, maybe the main thing that we uh, we can get from uh, this morning uh, seminar. Okay, uh, this morning session we will have two speakers. First, Professor Francisca Runka Zakaria, MSc. Uh, she is a lecturer and researcher from IPB University. Uh, let me read her CV. At the moment, we will start, before we start with the first uh, presentation, uh, Professor Dr. Zakaria, Runkat Zakaria, Francisca Runkat Zakaria, he, she was graduated from Agricultural Product Technology, IPP University in 1974, and 
she got her master's degree uh, from Department of Food Science and Human Nutrition, Michigan State University. And in 1991, he got, she got her PhD degree from University de Lorraine, France. Hopefully this is wrong. Uh, pronunciation, University de la Rhine, uh, okay, in a medical biochemistry. Okay, her publication, Professor Francisca Zakaria, uh, she publishes, she published more than 50 journal and also more than 10 books. And her recent publication in 19, in 2017, in 2017, uh, entitled Anti-Diabetic and Immunodulatory Potential of Purple Soymic Enriched with Crude Palm Oil Microcapsule in Type 2 Diabetes Mellitus Respondents. Okay, that's the main CV that I can uh, show up to you, okay? and. Her position currently, uh, she is a consultant in various agent, government and private, and she's also the expert team member of various government bodies. And she also got experience uh, about 35 years as a lecturer in IPB University. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think without any further ado, Please help me to welcome her, Professor Francisca Rungat Zakaria, to deliver the talk this morning. Uh, her topic is about food and immunology. I think, uh, Professor Francisca, uh, time is. Good morning. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm going to share my screen. I hope it works. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I got my screen on. Yes. So this is my right. uh, presentation. And before I start with my uh, simple talk, I would like to thank the uh, Ibu Professor Tejasari who has given me this opportunity to share my uh, limited knowledge actually about food and immunology. Yes, I have uh, done research in food and immunology actually since 1991 when I started my PhD. As uh, when I uh, studied the allergenicity of um, milk protein. Okay, uh, I will, uh, since the topics of my uh, presentation start with food, so the title is Food and Immunology. Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry about this uh, connection. That's all right, Professor. No, it's okay now. Okay, good. Uh, so I will talk a little bit about food, but not much because I think uh, we are all food scientists. We study food technique. Review about food that is required during the COVID-19 outbreak. So uh, to make it short, I always use WHO recommendation as a final reference. As you can see here, um, here's the nutrition advice for adults during COVID-19, recommended by WHO here. Yeah. And this is the uh, recommendation of the nutrition uh, um, slide in, uh, from WHO. So I think 
we have to rely on this. Uh, of course, there are many recommendations, but the final recommendation is from WHO. And uh, that's one thing, if we, that uh, all this recommendation is uh, information and healthy foods. Uh, I point here, I circle here in red, two important um, recommendation. The first one is eat fresh and this unprocessed food. This this is not uh, 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 um, a very uh, shocking uh, expression, but I think we have to study about this. Unprocessed food. This is the final recommendation. And of course, uh, eat moderate amount of fat and oil and eat less salt and sugar. This is a very famous, uh, simple, to the point recommendation for overall health, including immune, immune, immune system in, our, in the circle later. But this is my uh, introduction about the food. Now I will move to immune system. Well, actually, this, this is the very basic immune uh, system um, activity, but I'm going to, rely, uh, to relate it uh, directly with the COVID-19. Uh, actually, immunology, we have it. We have it all. There is one uh, very important uh, thing about immunology is that we have very good defense about all aggressions from outside when our body is healthy. So the key word is healthy body. So what is a healthy body? We will see it later. So in the immune system, uh, we know that when, when there are foreign materials or microbes, including virus, COVID-19, bacteria, they be when they enter our body, uh, we will call them anti. Our body has the first uh, physical chemical uh, defenses, okay, which is the barrier, the skin, mucous membrane, stomach, lysozyme, even here, coughing. Coughing and sneezing is also very important, so do not prevent coughing. When you need to cough, cough, but follow the uh, normal uh, health protocol. Cough not on the open air, but cough on your elbow. Remember that. Okay. When uh -huh. our first defense, okay. When our first defense and second defense fail, then we will have C. Uh, we will uh, uh, look at this picture. In this picture, this is a very nice picture that I can copy from the internet from one of the uh, uh, research agency in the United States. In this picture, you can see the pink uh, bullet, which is the virus. Actually, this is the in vitro study showing the virus coming out from the infected um, uh, this uh, virus infection may um, occur when the first and probably half of the second uh, defense fail. Okay? But even if the first and the second defense fail, we still have our third defense. So, so body can provide the third defense, which is the antibody synthesis. Just remember the healthy body, okay? Okay, um, we know that when immune defense happens to one body, we call it immunity. It can happen in one healthy person. It can happen in two or three healthy persons. When it happens in many healthy persons, then we will have, have hope for the herd immunity. 
heard is actually terminology for the uh, animals. So now people call it collective immunology. If the immunity happen in many healthy person. Okay, so there is hope for collective or health immunity. Okay, now let's see what happens when, when the uh, virus enter our body. Uh, there is actually various types of immune cells that can attack the cells. This is a picture of how an infected cell with the virus is attacked by natural killer itself. It can also be attacked by cytotoxic cells. And now there is a very important, we will see later, a very important uh, publication about the resistance of T cells in COVID-19 infected cells. Okay, so T cells is also very important for the prevention of um, COVID-19. You can see that the COVID-19 cells can seek, if you look at this, uh, the next this picture here, you can see that in this uh, yellow bullet is the T cells. This is a picture provided by the University of Chicago uh, very recently, showing how the T cells try to destroy the uh, uh, virus in COVID-19 infected cells. So besides antibody depression, these cells, natural killer, cytotoxic cells are very active in destroying the COVID-19. So we don't have to worry. All we have to worry is to keep our body healthy. We have very good uh, system, immune system against COVID-19. So when people is infected with the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> COVID-19, after seven to 14 days of exposure, antibody is produced. Again, in healthy people, healthy people means people consuming healthy foods. Please remember that. No one is healthy without consuming healthy food. So our keywords now is healthy food. Okay. This is just a very simple uh, 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 um, explanation about the antibody synthesis. And uh, we know that all these antibody are specific antibody. Okay. Immunity against mutation is also uh, can be detected by uh, this antibody because of their specificity. So even though the antibody is not permanent, but they can be specific, they can follow the mutation of the protein molecule in the virus. Okay, we will move to the next. This is the uh, specific antibody synthesis pattern of COVID-19 antibody. Oh. Of COVID-19 antibody. As we see in this pattern, you can see that as the uh, antigen or the virus accumulate in our body, uh, there will be times, you see the red curve is the time when everybody is synthesized by our body against COVID-19 specifically. Um, so you see this normal curve, but it is specific for every antigen. And this picture, I... I'm very happy because I can download it from the internet. It's a specific antibody synthesis pattern for COVID-19. So what I'm saying is that antibody production, antibody defense, and immune system through cellular immunity defense against COVID-19 is very effective. 
we only have to keep our body healthy. Okay. Why consuming healthy food is crucial? Because if you see the immune system, cells and protein molecules. Most of the uh, cytokines, most of the molecules produced by immune cells are proteins. So we need all the uh, necessary uh, um, compounds from food so to provide uh, the cell uh, synthesis. So the immune cells requires protein and all the protein molecules and the body and the proteins. We need all these protein and cell synthesis by using healthy diet containing all, not only one vitamin D or vitamin C. No, we need all. 44 nutrients. And don't forget, not only 44 nutrients, we also need fibers and here, thousands of bioactive compounds. And all these requirements, 44 nutrients, fibers, and thousands of bioactive compounds at a time can only be provide, provide only from diet. And the diet should be healthy diet that provides all these requirements. Okay, this is I just want to show several data about the uh, 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 production of antibody in uh, 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 COVID-19 patients. This is just data just to show you. And uh, this is also another nice data. Uh, and analyzing blood from COVID-19 patients, and they show the production of antibody to SARS-CoV-2. Okay, so I mean, data uh, like this, so we can be uh, very happy that our body, healthy body, actually can produce very effective immune defense. Okay. But we have to eat good food. Okay, here's also another uh, story or diamond. If you remember the Diamond Princess Cruise, we know that the 80% uh, of the infected patients show mild symptoms, which means they are immune. They're, they have a very good immune system. So, in short, I would say that there is hope for collective herd immunity. If we keep our body healthy, of course, by consuming healthy food. Let's go to what is healthy food. If you want to talk about health, we always refer to WHO. I think there are many experts and many organizations, but I use WHO because I know how they work, how serious. And how serious and how many experts involved uh, for them in, in, in their work to provide this very simple recommendation. So what we need as our healthy food is we have to eat fruits and vegetables, legumes, don't forget legumes as the source of proteins and fibers. And this is the most important thing also, who grain meaning unprocessed so as a food technology we should remember unprocessed what does it mean so what it means to the food industry and food technology it doesn't mean that we don't need technology but we have to choose correct technology to provide healthy food this is our big challenge and this is the daily eat and this is also another thing. We know that for snacks, choose raw vegetable. Again, a very, uh, uh, a very strong um, 
challenge for food industry to provide snacks made of raw vegetable and fresh fruit. How do we provide this healthy food to our society? So it choose raw vegetable and fresh food rather than foods rather than foods high in sugar, fat, and salt. Please think of all the food industry products that are high in sugar, fat, and salt that we provide our society as snacks. This is a very big challenge. Okay, I will continue to do the other slide. And the other slide, of course, this is quite famous, eat less salt. And sugar. But what have we done with our food products to provide products, industrial products that contain less salt and sugar and less fat? Have we done enough? And this is a question for all of us. Okay, recommendation of healthy foods. So what is the healthy food? If this is very simple, we already actually it occurs in our nature. Nature provides us abundantly, but we take them for granted. We only believe when we now know have many research showing that even carotenoids, there are seven thousand types of carotenoids, not only in carrots but in many types of green food we have many fibers um, spread in all types of foods we know this and we also know that we also know that flavonoids there in, in nature spread in all types of plants and foods, there are more than 5,000 flavonoids. What does it mean? What, what does this data mean? It means that since our body has consumed, adapted to plant food since millions of years ago, it means that we have to consume all these bioactive compounds. 700 types of carotenoids, 500, 5,000 types of flavonoids, and many types of fibers that we have to consume every day. How do we do that? It's very easy when we consume natural food in form of vegetable, beans, legumes, and also in form of fruits. Now, there is one important mark that I put here, enjoy sweet from fruits. Only, yes, why only? Because we have to start reduce sugar consumption. Do not put sugar in your milk. Do not put sugar on your fruit juice. That's fruit fresh as it is and enjoy the sweetness. We need the sweet taste because we have the nerve in our mouth for the sweet taste. But remember, from fruit only. Okay. So what is the, uh, this is a copy of the recommendation of WHO. I did not translate it. I want you to read it, look yourself. What is their uh, recommendation for plant food? Eat mostly foods of plant origin. We know it because we, have, we need all the 5,000 flavonoids and 700 carotenoids. How do we do that? We have to eat at least, here's the number, if you want to see a number, okay, here's the number, 600 grams of fruits and vegetables every day for adults. And actually, unprocessed cereals, 
I think all food technologies should be aware of what unprocessed cereal means, okay? And un also unprocessed legumes to provide all the uh, fibers and 5,000 flavonoids and 700 of carotene. We need that. Okay, food. So if we know the healthy food, what are the food that must be avoided or limited? Here. One, when we, you remember the polishing of paddy to provide brown rice and another polishing machine, we provide white rice. While doing this, we eliminate, we throw away the bran containing vitamins, minerals, fibers, and more than two bioactive compound. So this is our first mistake, our first mistake, mistake because we throw away all the necessary things that we have to consume and we eat only carbohydrates, starch, beginning of diabetes. Okay, this is just an illustration of what we have thrown away when we are refining in cereals. Okay, another example. We remember, we know sucrose in uh, sugar cane. We extracted the sucrose like this, and there are two different things. When we consume sucrose from the sugar cane, it will become black glucose in more than 20, one hour, as compared to pulp and mix. If we consume the same quantity of sucrose in form of sugars. And we also remember that sugarcane also contains soluble fibers, bioactive compounds more than 2000, and vitamins and minerals. And when we chew this sugarcane, we also provide oral physiology, which is very important with the. Uh, system. Okay, look at our the process that we do to pork. We throw away all fibers, more than 2,000 bioactive compounds, vitamin, mineral, good fat, protein, and also oral physiology of corn on the top. When we pro process this corn to produce maizena. Okay, so that's the beginning of the unhealthy food. And we are providing unhealthy food through food industry to our society. Think about that. This is very important. Look at what we've done with the fat. We have tremendous quantity of carotene in CPO. But what do we do when we produce, when we refine the CPO into cooking oil? Okay, we throw away, we throw away all the carotenoids, which is mini, which means that one ml of CBO contains 450 micrograms of retinol, enough to provide the necessary requirement for one child a day. Only one only one ml. But we throw them away, okay? We also throw away vitamin mineral and because we already thrown away the carotenoid, which is antioxidant, we have to re-add antioxidant synthetic, which is carcinogenic. And when we produce this, when we produce this oil to become margarine, we change the fat into trans fat which is two times more dangerous than um, saturated oil. Okay, that, these are some of the examples. And we know that sucrose, flour, rosena, tapioca, margarine fat, and oil are very important ingredients producing non food, food industry. Okay? So, the more refined, the more loss of vitamins, mineral fibers, bioactive compound, and antioxidants. This is our big challenge. 
Okay, I want to show you an important example. For example, take a look, compare biscuit or one cake banana. Okay, you have in 100 gram, you have 600 calorie in biscuit, but only 100 calorie in banana. Why do we have so high calorie in biscuit and mix? Because it is made of flour, sugar, and margarine. Think about how much margarine and fat we put when we make cakes. And, and also because we have lost all the flavor and color, we have to add synthetic chemicals. So these are non whole foods. No bioactive compound, whereas we still have plenty of bioactive compound in banana. Vitamin no in biscuit because we we have low glycemic index in banana and this product only produces calorie whereas in banana we still have DHA EPA very healthy fat even though in very small quantity but they are very they exist there so think about all what we call cool food Cool food and non cool food. What are you? What, what are we going to provide our children? Cool foods or non cool foods? Okay, so this is the food industry that uncool refined ingredient that provide products, lack of vitamins, mineral, no fibers, no fiber, and vitamin compounds that are actually important for our health and important for our immune system. Because there's no bioactive compound, no fiber, no vitamin, they require food additives, which are xenobiotic. If you study food toxicology, you will understand xenobiotic. Plenty of sugar, salt, and fat. So these are the uh, very dangerous it's very easy to become fat like this because if we eat only cakes we will eat only calorie okay and we also know that obesity provide very low immune system okay in our country we already have the ministry the regulation of the ministry of health declaring information about sugar fat content in processed food and the warning the warning health warning sugar consumption more than 50 grams so more than 2000 milligram total fat 67 gram per person per day increased risk of hypertension so this is the common recommendation in all countries but i don't know how far have we uh, come up with this implementation of this regulation to protect our society from uh, lack of immune system? Okay, now I will go to the um, uh, experiment research that we have done since 1990. Uh, this is our work with. Oh, actually, there is study also here. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the, uh, the result of our research that showed the immune enhancer activity of ginger extract in healthy male students. I just had I'm sorry. Your name here. I think your name is here. Okay. And this is, these are the students from the presenter that uh, participate. They are quite happy. And we collect their blood. We provide the uh, 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 ginger drink for one month for 30 days. And the most impressive result that we found is the increasing natural killer lysing activity. OK? And this is the, the our data. Look, this is before consuming. This is one month after consuming. You will see that the lysing activity become very high.
time in both uh, two experiments. So we know that um, lysine natural killer is a member of the immune cell that specialize in destroying virus infected cells and also cancer cells. So Zakaria, sorry. This, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's so this is the uh, we also in 1995 also did a research uh, on fruits, mango and papaya and vegetable that we uh, provide to workers in two factory. And the result is that after consuming this additional uh, food, in addition to their normal diet, they have increased in CD4 and CD8 three cells and also increased in lymphocyte cell proliferation. Okay, we also did uh, immunomodulator activity of Silebata, which is the Tindau extract, and it shows lymphocyte cell proliferation in cell culture, and it also shows that these products are not toxic to the cells. And this is the immunomodulator activity of alginate oligosaccharides that provide um, improvement in CD8. This is, remember this picture? Okay, we also did uh, research in um, uh, uh, of um, uh, purple soy, soybean for the type 2 diabetes patients. And this is the result of the increasing of CD4 and CD8 that we measure with flow cytometer. This is the uh, increment, the changes, positive changes. So uh, the, con the, 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 the conclusion is that uh, soy consumption of soy for 28 days is reduced blood sugar. And this is also another of our research that about uh, uh, cytosan with human lymphocyte cells. And uh, the, 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 the killing, apoptosis killing of cancer cells. Culture with uh, cytosan. Okay. Um, So this is the uh, uh, this is just the explanation of how it may uh, work. Okay. Okay. This is this is our uh, our uh, another uh, very research about noni like um, product made of a mixture of gallium and ulfalactuca. And we put the extract. Yes, is, is it time? Okay, yes, I'm finishing. She's a researcher and also lecturer. He's a researcher and a lecturer in the Graduate School of Agriculture, Ehima University, Matsuyama City, Ehima, Japan. Uh, Professor Takuya Sugahara. He got his bachelor degree in animal cell technology, faculty of agriculture, Kyushu University. Uh, it was in 1988. And later he got his master degree, his master degree in 1990. Uh, it was in animal cell technology as well, uh, Graduate School of Agriculture, Kyushu University. So it was the same university. And the next, his PhD degree, uh, he got it in 1999 uh, from the same university, Kyushu University, and also the same uh, department, which is animal cell technology. <laughs> Thank you.
his recent publication, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, which is in 2020, I think uh, this is the most recent one. Uh, he got it in Molecular Immunology uh, Journal, uh, entitled Trigonaline, an alkaloid with anti-day granulation properties. Okay, and the second, which is still in press, so also it will be published in this year, 2020. Uh, the title of the article, it is anti-melanogenic activity of methanolic extract from leaves of Sobaria sobifolia on uh, stimulated melanoma cells. His job history, his job history uh, start from 1994 till 2006. He was an assistant professor at Faculty of Agriculture at Guinea University. And then from 2013 till now, uh, he is a professor at Graduate School of Agriculture at Guinea University. And from that year till now also, uh, he, he is appointed, he was appointed as a director of Food and Health Science Research Center at Guinea University. I think this is the briefly the introduction of uh, Professor Takuya Zukahara in this morning session. He will present his topic about immunostimulatory function of Indonesian local food. Okay, so our professor from Japan, but talking about Indonesian local food in enhancing the immunostimulatory uh, of our food. Okay, without any further ado, I think uh, we welcome Professor Sugahara. Uh, you got 40 minutes for your talk, uh, Professor. Time is yours. Okay, thank you for a nice introduction. Salam uh, pagi. My name is uh, Takuya Sugahara. Can, can you hear me? It's okay, no problem? Okay, I'd like to share okay. my study uh, about the immunostimulatory function of Indonesian local food. So, uh, as uh, you introduced, I am from Japan and uh, from uh, Shikoku Island. Uh, I'm in the Ehime, and uh, we are in Matsuyama City. So the in Matsuyama City, so uh, there are some good sceneries um, about the uh, hot spring and uh, Matsuyama Castle and uh, the Mat festival, autumn festival. So it, it is the picture of the uh, Ehime University main gate in the cherry blossom in the this picture taken in the uh, spring uh, season and the very nice uh, cherry blossom full bloom. And this is the Faculty of Agriculture. It's the main building of the Faculty of Agriculture. So uh, I'd like to introduce the food function of uh, Indonesian local food. And uh, we are evaluating uh, food function using animal cell technology in vitro. Uh, we use the primary cells and the some many kinds of cell lines and the primary cells to evaluate the uh, food extract in um, uh, animal cells, many kinds of animal cells. After in vitro experiment, we move to the in vivo experiment using mice. Uh, using uh, normally we use mice and sometimes rat. So we retrieve the uh, serum or some organs after all administration of some uh, uh, 
extracts. Then to retrieve the serum or organs at the at the surface, and then we are uh, using the ex vivo experiment in living tissues. After our administration, we retrieve the cells and organs, and then we culture the cells in, on the dish. Then uh, we evaluate the uh, function of the food stuff. Administ administered by orally. So this is the picture of the how to evaluate the food function by using animal cells. We use many cells. This is a, a kind of lymphocytes. We culture the, the cells in the culture dish and add the sample and culture several hours and then that we the medium to evaluate the uh, materials produced by cells, such kind of uh, immunological proteins. So we, we use the main kind of cells. This is a human hybridoma hb 4 c cells producing IgM. It is, IgM is a kind of uh, immunological proteins. So this is the, uh, these two uh, lung can cancer cells. Uh, it's from lung cancer, it's from colon. Uh, of human. Uh, this picture is the uh, mouse adipocyte, NH3T3L1 cells. This producing all droplet. And then we evaluate these cells for, uh, we, we use this cell for evaluating, for evaluation of uh, anti obesity activity of foods. HB4 uh, cells is the immunological cell. So we use the immunomodulatory function of the foods. Uh, this is the uh, illustrate of the animation of the evaluate of the food function in vivo. The sample will, will, will be uh, administered by orally like this. And then, well, one, 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 one month, well, some more months after one month or two months, something, uh, we retrieve the serum and uh, some collect some specific organs. Uh, these, these are immunological tissues, spleen, pile patch, mesenteric lymph nodes. Then we detrude the cells in these organs, then culture the cells in the couch media, and then evaluate the activity of the cells in these organs. So uh, today, I have to focus on the immunological function uh, of the banquet. The, this, the, maybe you are very familiar with the banquet. So the, the banquet fiber extracts, we use the banquet fiber extracts to evaluate the immunomodulatory function, immunological function, uh, especially on macrophage. So the at first the evaluate the uh, function of the immunomodulatory activity of banquet fiber extracts in vitro and in vivo. The banquet is one of the most popular edible root vegetables in Indonesia. So they maybe you are quite familiar with the banquet. And use the low, low tuber is the use this uh, kind of uh, fruit. And uh, sometimes you maybe you use uh, cosmetics. It's a nutrient component composition of banquets, uh, 80% of water, 14, almost 15% of carbohydrates. Uh, carbohydrates is a major component in the banquet. And some proteins, or lipids, include fibers. And then we collect the dietary fiber to evaluate the immunological functions. So the evaluation of the immunostimulatory effects of bacon fiber extracts in vitro and in vivo is the, uh, the major topic of this uh, presentation. So flesh. Banquet 
uh, peering, gliding, and uh, suspended in distilled water for overnight. And the bank of crude fiber was collected and uh, steamed for 30 minutes and soaked in 80% ethanol and 60 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. And the uh, filtrated and then squeezed, and the fiber uh, concentrate was retrieved and then over uh, open dried and then uh, powders. So we use the bank on fiber powder for sample. This this is uh, manufacturing made. So we we use the bank on fiber powder to evaluate the uh, immunostimulative function of bank on fiber extract. So uh, we uh, use this fiber powder to uh, extract the components in the fiber extract powder, fi fiber powder. Uh, fiber powder was stirred at 25 degrees Celsius for two hours, and then centrifuge, and then collect supernatant. We uh, named it as BFE1. Uh, the other one is uh, stirred for 30 minutes and heated. This, this, this one uh, uh, extracted at room temperature for two hours. And this one and uh, stirred for 30 minutes and then heated uh, 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. It, uh, we used the uh, haute for extraction and then centrifuged. This is the uh, supernatant. Uh, we collect the supernatant and then named BFE2. BFE1 is the room temperature, room temperature extracted, uh, extracted at room temperature. And then BFE2 was extracted at high temperature. So we use the uh, light cell line, hb 4 c 5 6 it's producing IgM. The other one is the, uh, Primary cell, we use primary cells. Uh, the cell was, uh, spermocytes was retrieved from spleen of the mice. So we use the cell line experiment and the primary cell line, uh, primary cell experiment. In cell line experiment, we add the BFE uh, to the culture media and then culture several hours and then collect the supernatant to evaluate the IgM concentration of the uh, culture media. And the cell pellet was uh, also retrieved, uh, collected, and then uh, gene expression level was uh, evaluated by real-time RT-PCR method. On the other hand, uh, my spermocytes was uh, cultured uh, with BFE for 48 hours, and then collect supernatant to evaluate the quantification of immunoglobulins and the cytokines. So uh, this uh, showed the effect of the effect of the BFE on IgM production by HB for cheaper cells. Uh, the B, uh, BFE1 extracted at room temperature uh, have very slight activity uh, to, uh, to promote the IgM production. On the other hand, heat extracted BFE2 was strongly activated IgM production by HB4 Schiffer cells. So, uh, so we focused on the BFE2 because the BFE2 have the high, had the high activity compared with the BFE1. So the, we evaluate the effect on uh, IgM gene expression level in HB4 cells. So as you can see in this figure, BFE2 promote the uh, IgM gene expression uh, in a dose dependent manner, very strongly activate the gene expression level in HB4 cell cells to promote the, uh, enhance the IgM production. So this uh, picture showed the uh, effect on primary lymphocyte effect of BFE on BFE2 on primary uh, lymphocytes. So the, the addition of 
BFV2. This, this data, all of these data are above it, uh, are show, shows the effect of BFV2, it heat attracted. IgG, IgM, IgA, all of these uh, immunoglobulins uh, was uh, 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 activated. Uh, this protection of these immunoglobulins uh, were uh, enhanced uh, in a dose in a dose dependent manner. Very clearly activated. So the BFE uh, activated not only cell line, but also the primary mice spinocytes. So uh, this uh, slide showed the other uh, effect of BFE2 on uh, cytokine production. Interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, interleukin-10, interleukin-4, interleukin-5, interferon gamma uh, production was evaluated. So the, all of these uh, cytokine production was uh, enhanced by the addition of BFE2 in their culture media. So the, we, next we evaluate the effect of BFE2 on um, mice uh, or our in, in vivo experiment. So we used the six week old female biopsy mice uh, and the BFE2 uh, orally administered for two weeks at 27 milligram per kilogram body weight per day and uh, 6.75 milligram per kilogram body weight per day, two doses. So after two weeks, uh, serum pyro patch PP and the mesenteric lymph node and MLN and spring was retrieved. And then uh, the activity of immunological cells was evaluated in ex uh, vivo assay, like, like, as shown in this figure. So uh, this uh, figure showed the result of uh, the effect on Ig immunoglobin production, immunoglobin level in serum, and uh, production level in splenocytes. The upper figures show the serum IgG, IgA, IgM level. So the uh, at high dose. IgG and IgM, IgA concentration in serum uh, are significantly uh, enhanced. On the other hand, activity of spinocytes, uh, IgG production, IgM production, and IgA production libraries uh, were uh, clearly uh, activated by, uh, activated by BFV to administration at high dose to uh, the spinal sites. So take, take intake of BFE significantly enhanced production of IgG, IgM, and IgA by spinal sites of the high dose group. So, uh, and next figure showed the Sorry. Uh, the next speaker showed the effect of BF uh, administration on uh, MLN lymphocytes and uh, pyropatch lymphocytes. MLN and uh, pyropatch is the intestinal immune system, participate in the intestinal immune, uh, immune responses. So the Ig and IgM and Ig production level of MLRS uh, also. Uh, activated at high dose. So the IgG, IgM, IgA production level of pyropatch lymphocytes also activate, 
affected by BFF uh, intake as shown in this figure. So the, all of this figure shows the intake of BFE can activate immunological response in mice, especially uh, intestinal uh, immune system, immune responses. Uh, so in this picture, uh, in the intestinal immune response can be activated by the BF intake. So uh, this figure showed the effect of BFE intake on uh, gene expression level in spleen sites and uh, pilipatch lymphocytes. So at, uh, especially at high dose, uh, very significantly activate the gene expression level in uh, both in spleen and the pilipatch lymphocytes, spleen, spleen sites and uh, Part lymphocytes. So the intake of the bank one fiber extracts can activate uh, gene expression level in uh, lymphocytes and promote the Ig immunoglobulins and uh, many kinds of cytokines. So the so the oral administration of BFE is very uh, useful for activate the immunological functions in body. So the uh, this is summary summarized of the summary of the chapter one. BFE stimulated IG production by HB for cells cells uh, and uh, mass spin sites in vivo. BFE activates the adaptive immune responses of enhance, by enhancing production of I immunoglobulins and cytokines in vivo. BFE may activate the immune, immune response by enhancing macrophages. So the, uh, this uh, uh, result was already published in the cytotechnology uh, in the molecular activity of Bancom in vitro and in vivo, uh, as shown in these figures. So uh, next, uh, the chapter two, the effect of bank on fiber extract on macrophage in vitro and in vivo. So not only lymphocytes, bank on fiber extract activate the macrophages, macrophages participate in the immune, immune responses. So the macrophages are a key player of an essential and the pivotal role in the immune and adaptive responses against the infections by the phagocytic activity and the great invading pathogens and dying cell cells. The, this is the macrophages. This is the phagocytic activity against uh, invaded beer and then produce some cytokines. The activated macrophages are considered to be as, associated with the cytokines such as, such as interleukin 1, interleukin 6, and tender alpha to recruit and activate the other cells to in, initiate the adaptive immune response. So the Macrophage is a key player in innate immune system to eat the pathogens. And then uh, not only eat pathogens, uh, it could be called uh, phagocytosis activity. Uh, not only phagocytosis activity, uh, macrophage has uh, another important uh, role uh, to present the antigen. So information of the antigen inform the info, uh, antigens to the uh, adaptive uh, uh, such kind of uh, uh, lymphocytes uh, participating in the adaptive immune responses. So uh, in this section, uh, ev evaluation of the most stimulated effect of bank on fiber extracts on macrophage functions. 
So the this figure showed the effect of BFE on macrophage serine, J774.1 cells. We use the serine, macrophage serines. So the cytokine production, TNF alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and the interleukin 6 production was uh, clearly stimulated by uh, BFE, as shown in this figure. And then the gene expression level in the J774.1 cells, uh, uh, gene expression level of TNF alpha and uh, interleukin 6 gene uh, can be activated by BFE in a dose dependent manner. Very clearly, uh, gene expression level activated. BFE stimulated production of both TNF alpha interleukin. These two cytokines are very important cytokines produced by uh, macrophage serine, macrophage. So the both uh, TNF alpha and interleukin 6 by J774.1 cells by activating gene expression activity. So gene expression level, BFE activate the gene expression level in macrophage serine. And then finally, uh, TNF alpha and interleukin 6 production was activated. So this slide show the uh, flow site meta analysis of the phagocytotic activity. So the phagocytotic activity or J774.1 cells was uh, clearly activated by treatment with uh, BFE. So the, this is the control uh, on uh, 36%. And then uh, at the highest in the 6.8 milligram per ml of BFE, activate the phagocytosis activity until uh, or almost 60%. They compared these two figures. Uh, BFE stimulated the phagocytosis activity of macrophage serine. So not only uh, cytokine production, but also Phagocytotic activity it can be activated by BFE. So this slide shows the primary macrophage. We retrieved the PMAC. Uh, PMAC, uh, PMAC says uh, petrolina macrophages collected from mice of the mineral uh, tissues. abdominal cavities. So the, this PMAC is a primary macrophage. So not only serine, but also uh, primary macrophage, PMAC, uh, can be activated by uh, BFP, as shown in this figure. TNH alpha, interleukin 6, uh, production level are clearly activated. And then, uh, gene expression level of TNF alpha interleukin 6 were also uh, stimulated by uh, BFE in a dose dependent manner, uh, as indicated in this uh, figure. So, uh, not only RIME, but also PMA, primary macrophage, can be activated uh, by BFE. Uh, as, in, as shown in this figure. So uh, this figure is the in vivo experiment and oral administration of BFE uh, facilitated interleukin-6 and TNF alpha production of uh, petroleum macrophage uh, PMAC from administered mice. So the, the interleukin 6, inter, uh, TNF alpha, and the interleukin 6 uh, activity can be activated by uh, intake of BFE. And then gene expression level also activated. Uh, almost same details uh, in 
compared with the in vitro experiment, not only in vitro uh, intake of BFE can activate macrophage in vivo, in, in mice. So this sh uh, figure showed the uh, parasitose activity in vivo. Uh, or administration BFE uh, facilitated uh, uh, phagocytotic activity of PMAC uh, of uh, BFE administered mice, especially at high dose, very clearly activated. Phagocytotic uh, activity was clearly activated at high dose. So uh, next, we uh, try to identify the active substance in fiber extract. So it is the active substance extract was extracted at the high temperature, 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes, very high temperature. So the active substance, we uh, speculate the active substance in the part of the uh, carbohydrate. So uh, we tried to uh, identify the, the active substance in BFE. So we tried to treat the BFE with pectinase. The pectinase destroyed the pectin, you know, dietary fibers. Uh, it uh, soluble in, can be soluble in, soluble in water. So the, we treat the BFE with pectinase and evaluate the activity on macrophage serine. So after pectinase treatment, the activity of BFE uh, on interleukin 6 production and tnl alpha production was decreased uh, as indicated in these figures. So however, not completely inactivated. This slide shows the one of the, there maybe there are more than two active substances. One is, at least one active substance is uh, pectin because the pectin is treatment uh, inactivated the activity. However, the activity was not completely dis uh, disappeared. So this data shows, shows this data shows also shows the there is uh, another active substance in BFE, not uh, uh, except except for pectins. However, pectin in BFE is the one of the active substance in uh, BFE. So and other pectin from other uh, pectin from other vegetable and uh, fruits, we evaluate the activity, uh, the other pectin from vegetables and the fruits. So our results show the other pectin can be, uh, can activate the immunological cells as like BFE pectins. So the, uh, we 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 can we can say the active substance in BFE. One of the active substances in BFE is pectin. So uh, the so next we need to evaluate the mode of action of BFE on macrophage. The macrophage activates. This activation is proved to be uh, mediated primarily by recognition of active substance through specific receptor that have uh, ability to recognize foreign ligands during the initial phase of immune responses. The major receptor on macrophage is the TLR4, toll like receptor 4, and CD14. Complement receptor three, scavenger receptor, dectin one or uh, mannose receptor. 
However, the TAR4 is a major receptor for uh, the invaded bacteria. So this receptor activation can uh, initiate the, especially TR4. TR4 activation can initiate the intercellular signaling cascade, in, including uh, MAP kinase, MAP kinase, and uh, NF kappa Bs, and resulting in induced production of interleukin and TR alpha and uh, nitric oxide. <clears throat> So uh, we are with the <clears throat> mode of action of BFE or macrophage. So uh, LPS is the ligand of uh, TR4. So LPS can activate the macrophage. So uh, interleukin-6 and TN alpha production can be activated by LPS. LPS is the lipopolysaccharide. So the uh, NO is the nitric oxide, and uh, it's a logical effect of the immune, uh, immune, immune system that can directly inhibit the pathogen uh, replication. So inducible NO syn synthase, uh, INOS, uh, was originally identified and uh, characterized in macrophage. Catalytic activity of INOS can oxidize the substrate Arginine, arginine into uh, nitric oxide and air ethylene. So the INOS is the key enzyme to produce NO. So NO production and INOS activity, INOS gene expression levels can be activated by LPS as well as BFE. However, Treatment with BIPA. BIPA is a TR4 inhibitor. So treatment with TR4 inhibitor completely suppress the activity of BFE as shown in as shown in these figures. So interleukin 6 production and the TNR alpha product productions can be completely canceled by BIPA treatment, uh, TR4 inhibitor treatment. This data show the BFE activated macrophage via TAR4, and then activate the gene expression level. So this uh, slide show the downstream of the TAR4 signaling. So the these uh, MAP kinases and then these uh, 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 NF-kappa B pathways. Th these two uh, major pathways to activate the macrophage. Uh, gene trans gene expression levels, and then activate uh, cytokine protections. So about how activate the uh, macrophage. So we evaluate the NF kappa B pathways. So the BFE promote the. Uh, I kappa B, and then promote the uh, translocation of NF kappa B to nucleus like this. So this this figure show the, the uh, BFE activate the NF kappa B pathways downstream on TR4, as well as NF kappa B, uh, BFE activate the MAP kinase pathways, especially uh, JNK and P38 can be uh, clearly activated by BFE treatment. So this slide show the BFE stimulated possibility of uh, ERK12, very slightly activated, and especially JNK and P38 uh, were activated. Uh, this fact suggests the BFE activates macrophage not only via NF kappa B pathways, but also MAP kinase pathways. Both, both of two pathways can be activated uh, if they are located 
downstream of uh, uh, TR4 uh, receptors. So some uh, summarize in this slide, TR4 uh, BFE bind to the TR4 and activate, especially JNK and P38 and uh, ERK also. And this uh, NF kappa B pathways. But NF, not only NF kappa B pass, uh, uh, map kinetic pathways, uh, BFE uh, stimulate the translocation of NF kappa B to a nucleus. And then uh, AP1 and uh, NF kappa B uh, uh, stimulate the gene translational activity. Then uh, interleukin 6 and 10 alpha production can be activated by BFE. So this uh, experiment already uh, published in the two uh, journals. So uh, Bankan has immunostimulatory activity that could be developed as functional food with the uh, potential to moderate the immune system and the uh, health function. And then the export expected to contribute to the food industry in Indonesia based local uh, crops. So the bank on fiber extracts have the very strong immunostimulatory activity. So the, it is very useful for the activate our immunological functions against the COVID, or maybe also COVID-19. So I have maybe one or two minutes. So the, uh, the, the brief uh, uh, introduction of the another function of bank one, we avoid the anti-degeneration. This means the anti-allergy. Uh, on fiber, uh, Bankan also have the anti-allergy activity, not only immunostimulatory activity, but also anti-allergy activity, especially type one allergy uh, can be uh, activated. Uh, anti-allergy activity, uh, BFE have, uh, Bankan, Bankan have the anti-allergy activity. So degeneration, uh, release of the histamine, histamine uh, clearly decreased uh, treatment of, uh, by treatment of bankon extract to the uh, base reflex cells. So the, the activity, the active substance is very heat stable. Uh, heat treatment at uh, 100 degrees Celsius uh, for six minutes have no, uh, no effect on the activity. So the ethanol precipitate is uh, supernatant. Uh, we try to the speculate the active substance. So the ethanol, super, uh, ethanol, ethanol precipitation was uh, conducted. The, the supernatant have the more uh, strong activity, uh, more specific activity compared with the extract. So the uh, it's not the kind of sugar, but also other, maybe flavonoid or something we have as speculated. So uh, we try to uh, evaluate the food function of the Indonesian local crop, plant, spice and the herbs, coffee, stress and the mango, snake fruits, passion fruits, leaf fruits, uh, we have I, I, we're trying to avoid the make kinds of uh, products to uh, activate the food industry in Indonesia. Oh, it's a time. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Sugahara. Uh, it was fabulous talk, uh, talking about Indonesian tubers, Kung Kwan. You know, that's, uh, we got plenty, this type of uh, Kung Kwan, Indonesia. So I think uh, many people, uh, this food, uh, fresh, and fresh as uh, Rujak, I don't know Rujak. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. From the topic of Sister Dahara, I thought, I thought, and we think we learn a lot about how our food extract, our extract is mainly about fiber, food extract work, how to uh, enhance, you know, how to stimulate our immune system. It's mostly uh, it's about mode of action uh, that was uh, he talking about. I think uh, this is a time for us to have a uh, question and answer sent. Uh, I hope you are now ready, Mr. Chant. So uh, please, uh, participant, uh, prepare your question. And I think uh, some questions it has been here, okay. It's in from chat, from chat room. I have a few questions, and we will come back to our presenter, uh, Professor Zakaria, uh, Professor Sugara. Uh, I got a question here. I'm just gonna read this question uh, from Liz Mayana from Unismu Makassar, which is part of our. Indonesia is part of it. Indonesia, okay. This question for uh, Professor Zakaria. I hope uh, Professor Zakaria is back with us. Uh, I'm gonna read this question, Professor. Yeah. Uh, first question is actually the protein molecules that play a role. A uh, mention consisting of three antibodies, interferon and interleukin, called cytokine storms. So what about interferons and antibodies? Do they also cause negative effects such as cytokines? I hope Professor Zakaria got this question uh, clearly. This is about the uh, negative effect of uh, cytokine action, I think. So please, uh, Professor Garia, uh, to answer this question. Is Professor Zakaria with us? So give me a clue, uh, the host. Professor Zakaria. Okay, can you hear me? Oh yeah, okay, yes, please. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> good. Question, yeah. yeah. Yes, I've read the questions. Thank you for the question, but um, uh, interferon and interleukins are cytokines. Okay, okay, they are protein molecules and they are cytokines. So, Yes, oh, when these cytokines, either interferons or uh, interleukins, especially interleukins, are produced in high quantity, they may cause danger, of course, because they are inflammatory mediators, part okay. of inflammatory mediators. So if they are produced uncontrollably, they can produce inflammation everywhere. Okay. Inflammation means radang. Oh, it could okay. happen in in the vascular, in the tissue, everywhere. But but we also know that there are many bioactive compounds in food, in fruits and vegetable, and in spices that can control uh, the production of cytokines. I mean, they can modulate and make the production nice, balance. Okay? So okay. what we have to do, first thing is we have to consume enough whole food, fruits and vegetables to get. Remember that our body actually needs about 6,000 6, 6, bioactive compounds. 
How do we get them? Very simple. By consuming whole fruits, vegetable, legumes, spices. We know that spices are concentrated with bioactive compounds. So when when the our uh, bioactive compounds is balanced, I mean, there is a very difference between consuming bioactive compounds in form of vegetable, fruits, spices that we put in our food compares to bioactive compounds in capsules, okay? Why? Because when we have bioactive compounds in capsules, we only have part of the bioactive compounds and the concentration is very high. Think about caffeine. It's very different to consume caffeine in capsules and compared to consuming caffeine in a cup of brewed coffee. They're very different. Okay? So, yes. Um, if we consume food properly in quantity and variety, we can have sufficient bioactive compound to protect us and even to balance this immune response. And, 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 and the, uh, we don't have to worry so much about this cytokine um, uh, problem. But there is a lot of explanation behind this immune system of the cytokine and everything, you know. But uh, in short, if, if you want to discuss more, we can open another discussion. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Professor Zakaria. Uh, maybe from the from Usmaya, you got a feedback, maybe. Uh, Lismayana, sorry, Lismayana. Lismayana from UNISMO. If you got a feedback, just raise your hand. You can have a talk with uh, Professor Zakaria. It's all right. A little bit. Is that answering the question, uh, Lismayana? Answer? Okay. Uh, if not, it's all right. Uh, we have. The second question, Professor Zakaria, uh, I think the host can't, uh, can pop up the question, please. Oh yeah, we're still waiting for the second question, okay. Uh, is this the first question? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, how to make experimental models. Please explain how to make experimental animal model. Okay. Infection, as we know that an animal, especially two receptors. How can a two receptors also be found in experimental animal models? Can we find it, Professor Zakaria? Yes, I think uh, this receptor molecule may be different according to the different uh, gene, okay? Each gene will express their own protein molecules, but there are also protein molecules that are shared with the same gene. So when this, for this virus, as a protein molecule from the virus, it will need a similar protein receptors, okay? So um, when this animal can uh, be infected with this virus, it means that it, that means that this animal also share similar um, uh, parts of the protein receptors with human. That's, that's the logical thinking. Okay. How to make the experimental models? Um, there are many. We can 
isolate the virus and uh, introduce by injection, or you can also produce because it comes from the mouth. You can also probably put it, mix it with the with some food or uh, intubation. But it, it is virus also enter our body from the mouse body and human body from the nose too. It can be sprayed. And there are many uh, experimental method to infect the uh, experimental animal. But of course, we cannot use human as our experimental subject, no. What we can okay. do with the human is we search humans who has been naturally infected, not us, not the researchers that infect the human, no. We can infect the animal, but not human. We can use infected humans when we know that they are sick and we also have a, a, a swab test and things to prove that they are infected. Then we can study their performances. We can uh, ask these um, patients to participate in our study. For example, giving papaya or with our experiment, we provide papaya and mango every day and they become very healthy. Okay, thank you very much. Zakaria, I think this question from Lisna Hansu is also for the Professor Takuya Sugar. Oh, okay, so, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's because uh, Professor Sugara is the uh, answer for this question. Please, Professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the this question in the what is the suitable uh, animal model to survey the virus uh, uh, infection, right? So the it, it, so the animal models to make the suitable animal models is very 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 difficult to uh, to establish. So the um, I unfortunately I have not uh, very good answer to the experiment. That is to, because the animal experiments also regulated very low. Uh, how to put how the process also. So the infectious model is quite different to establish. So the, uh, I'm sorry, I have not answered the uh, specific answer for uh, this question. I'm sorry. It's all right. Okay, so, uh, Professor. Uh, okay, we have another question uh, for Professor Zakaria, I think. Yes. In turn, just a pop up the question for Professor Zakaria. We apply. Oh, okay. I cannot read it. <laughs> just a minute. Okay. Very small. Yeah. Okay, this this one. Yeah, this question. Can we apply essential oil to boost our immune? Can we apply oil yes, to yes. Our yes, 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 yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, yes. Essential oils is a very important oil for the membrane structure of immune cells. We have to consume essential oils. But it doesn't mean that we can, that we must consume essential oil in form of uh, purified oils. No, we can simply consume one avocado a day or okay. one okay. corn a day. We will get all the essential oil. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. This is another question. <laughs> the third question, Professor, I... I willing to uh, read the question. How does ginger, uh, how does ginger work, especially as an antidote to viruses such as uh, coronavirus? Okay, this is a very nice question. I'm glad that you asked it because, you know, we did our research uh, like 30 years ago. Our first uh, hypothesis 
was in traditional, traditionally people when they are not feeling well, when they are working very hard, they are traditionally consume ginger drinks. We have several types of ginger drinks, okay? So that okay. makes us think that them, uh, especially to avoid influenza and cold, you know. So we think that influenza means virus, okay? Influenza okay. means virus. So influenza. if this traditional practice uh, improves body health, avoid uh, cold, it means that it's there must be something in ginger that are effective against virus. Okay, so we did our experiment and we have has many parameters. Ibuteja was one uh, uh, of the students participated and he had, and she has his uh, her um, a thesis in one of these uh, part of this project, but one of the among all the uh, immune system parameters that we observe, one that is very significant is the activity of natural killer. Okay, natural killer is a member of immune cells that is specialized in destroying virus infected cells or cancer cells. This, is, this cell is very effective. And among all the parameters that we observe, we can see that we, we, we take this um, natural killer from the blood of our subjects after drinking uh, the ginger drink for 30 days and we culture we culture this natural killer cells there is a technique for this we culture it with cancer cell and we can observe very clearly how the natural killer isolate from the subject who has drink um, the ginger can destroy the cancer cell in vitro, we can see it very clearly. Okay, there is a technique for that, uh, okay. methodology for that, in vitro technology. Okay, so we are very happy because we can show that yes, after drinking ginger every day, only one glass of wedang jahe actually, with very limited sugar, not very sweet, but one glass of Wadang jahe naturally prepare, okay? For one month, we can see that the natural killer of the, our subject can destroy cancer cell in vitro much better than the natural killer from the control subject. So this proved that yes, uh, the traditional belief that ginger improve coal, common coal, it's true because it improves immune system, especially natural killer activity. Okay. Does that answer? Okay. Is it clear? Hello? Hello? Yeah? Okay. Still on, Bu. <laughs> oh, still hang, okay. Ah, got a photo here. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I answer? It's okay. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the bank account have the so the energy. Maybe you use the energy source. So the it containing the uh, not only uh, 
Carl Hardy's uh, like uh, uh, sugars. Uh, the, uh, so it also contains the many crude fibers. Uh, and then it, it also contains the uh, many kinds of functional materials. So you, you are better eat whole banquet. Uh, there's a, uh, maybe it can be, maybe you, you can eat low banquet, but also you can eat uh, heat, heat, heat treated also because the immunostimulatory active, active substance is very heat stable. So you can, you can cook the fried something and not, uh, not the frying but it's not uh, inactivate the active substances so that you can you can cook to eat the or bagels thank you it's okay <laughs> Francisca mau nambah. Ya boleh. Ya according to my experience and my knowledge, I would suggest or recommend the uh, public to consume bangkuang as a whole food in their daily diet. And Of course, they could consume it as part of the vegetable or fresh in form of salad. But although, just like with ginger, although bangkwang or ginger, when we test it, they're very good. It doesn't mean we have to eat them only. No, no. We still have to go to a variety because... We know that all these bioactive compounds distributed in the nature, what, ex, what bioactive compound in Bengkuang may not occur in uh, ginger, but the bioactive compound in ginger may, may not be present in Bengkuang. So we have to eat them both. And not only both, we have to eat all kinds of fruits and vegetables to fulfill the requirement of 6,000 bioactive compounds every day. We have to eat variety of food. And I will still will not recommend capsules unless, unless we are very sick and we cannot no. eat food. Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. That's why. Right. Yes, oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, Bu. Ya, <laughs> <laughs> suruh Teja, suruh aku ngomong. <laughs> oke, okay. thank you very much for this opportunity. Oke. Right. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Prof. Teja. <laughs> thank you. You have, been, you have taken over the discussion. Uh, sorry for the, the audience uh, participant. I just been kicked out by the system. So, yeah. but now I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Uh, thank you very much, yeah. Professor Sugara and Professor Zakaria, for a nice talk session for the first and the second. Uh, for the first, uh, I think the time is over now. It's 7:15. Five. Uh, Yeah, we got extra five minutes. But sorry, I have some uh, participant ready, but unfortunately the time up now for the first session. I think we can have a talk for uh, another another chance, another opportunity of another session. Uh, before we close the first session, I think it is not... Uh, It's not too bad for me to read uh, or to highlight uh, the topic or the summary of our discussion of this morning uh, from Professor Zakaria. Uh, what we have to uh, understand is actually uh, we have to balance our food 
to uh, immune response. So balanced food is important uh, to uh, improve our uh, balanced immune system. Okay. And from Professor Sugara, I think uh, he talked a lot about uh, mode of action of uh, food extract or the bioactive compound, which uh, from uh, Pong Kwang and uh, the mode of action of this Pong Kwang is uh, mainly uh, activating the uh, macrophage. I think that's the summary that can highlight uh, from the two speakers before uh, I return or before we close the first session. I think please help me to cheers the two presenters, uh, Professor Zakaria and Professor Sugahara. And thank you very much for the attention, audience, and I return the time back to MC Dewa Ayunda. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the speakers for a very informative and insightful presentation and discussion. As a form of appreciation, we would like to present certificate for the speakers. Here is a virtual certificate submission session to the speakers. This is an award to Professor Francisca Runcat Zakaria, MSc, PhD. Thank you for sharing your expertise in this session. And the next. And the next certificate, this is an award to Professor Takuya Sugaira PhD. Thank you for sharing your expertise and your experience in this session. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are entering to the second session. I would like to hand this session back to Insinyu JS PhD as the moderator. Please welcome Insinyu JS PhD. Okay, uh, just remind me if I have a problem with my voice system. Uh, Della, Della, can you please? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you very much. I think I don't have any of my uh, speak on my microphone system. Okay, before we start the first speaker of the second session, I'll read the CV of Professor Tejasari. Okay. Yeah. So Professor Tejasari uh, is a professor in Faculty of Agricultural Technology, University of Jember. She got her bachelor degree. It was in 1985. Uh, her field is community nutrition from IPB University. And her master degree, it was master of science in human nutrition and food. Uh, she got it from University of Philippines, Los Banos. And in two year 2000, uh, she got her PhD degree. Uh, the field is molecular nutritional food and immunology, and she got it from 
the IPB University. Uh, Professor Tejasari, uh, she got more than 100 papers, 10 books and 20 proceedings. And the recent publication from Professor Tejasari, it was about, uh, hang on, you know you're here. I think I'm just going to read one. The antihypertensive nutraceutical of Vigna bean protein hydrolysate by alkalase and flavazine. That's uh, the Journal of Functional Food and Nutraceutical Review. Okay. Uh, her current position from uh, 2006 till now. She is a director of certification body for person in the University of Japan. I think that's the brief introduction, uh, uh, Professor Tejasari. Without any further ado, I think uh, please uh, we welcome Professor Tejasari to have a talk. And her talk, it will be focused on food bioactive component enhancing immune function. Professor Tejasari, time is yours. Okay. Di stop dulu startnya. Kalau saya bisa masuk, oke. Okay. Oke, okay, thank you Pak Jayus. Uh, I would like to open first the screen. Is it clear Pak Jayus and the others? Yeah, that's right. Clear, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good for the azan. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Pak Jaya, for the time. Uh, for me, to continue the... Uh, sharing about the human function. Uh, Prof. Zakaria already uh, discussed completely <laughs> about the immune function and food. And then Prof. Takuya uh, already clearly uh, present how to measure the immune functions that stimulate by the by the compound of bengkuang. Uh, and then this this chance, this this time, I would like to share about more of focuses on the about food by the compound enhancing immune function. Uh, this is already mentioned by Pak Jaris, maybe I just skip this one. Uh, the one thing that I I do we have a research group on the food bionutrition and nutrient nutrition skills uh, that uh, explore or research the or uh, making um, research on this field, especially uh, the in regard to this this uh, subject, especially on the nutrition skills or food component bioactive. Uh, Analyze, yeah, of the health effect uh, on immune system. Okay, and maybe um, I just saw that I have already done uh, analysis of the food component by the compound extracted from bean uh, for the allergic effect. And I did it in the in the Takuya Celebrity Lab. Uh, how to measure the the immunoglobulin A, and then how to measure the uh, beta hydroxy mini days that indicating the the good relation of the cells, 
uh, get all the indicators of the anti allergic of the protein uh, bean protein uh, a long time ago i also doing research with prof zakaria uh, on how the bioactive compound of the ginger increase our, our immune system and my part is on the in vitro analysis uh, of the ginger component by the compound that later I will uh, discuss uh, specifically. Okay, if we consume the food or we eat, uh, we will eliminate our hunger, right? And then the food will provide nutrients needed for the energy production, the tissue growth, biological and physiological processes maintenance, and then also for satisfy our taste. And the last is for improving our health. And this is the trend that now uh, the, the researcher, uh, also the industry, looking for uh, the information of this uh, research uh, so that uh, besides we consume our fresh food, uh, the industry also can produce, uh, can develop the innovative product, yeah, uh, that is functional food that targeted on on how to enhancing uh, immune system, especially now in the pandemic uh, condition. Uh, maybe later there is another function of the food that we don't know. Yeah, it depends on our. Uh, okay, so uh, talking about food bioactive compounds, they could be in the form of nutrient. So several nutrient could be function as bioactive compound. Yeah, such as beta carotene selenium, uh, vitamin B complex, and then uh, protein component such as glutamine, yeah, and then minerals, micromineral, selenium, cuprum, and ginkgo, and then lipid component uh, such as omega-3, omega-6, uh, as a polyunsaturated fatty acid. And then the food bioactive component could be also in the form of non-nutrient, such as purine, pyrimidine, glutathione, and other uh, compound, uh, for example, uh, phenolic, phenolic compound, maybe, yeah, also flavonoid, terpenoid, and so on. And, and the other is, could be also microbial, such as probiotic that can enhance uh, our, our food immune system. But one important thing that we have to know, uh, whether it is food fresh, fresh food, or, or food biotech compound, component or compound, we have to eat in certain amount. Yeah, in certain amount. So that the, the, so that the, the, the food or, or food component, but compound uh, will enhance our immune system. Okay. So it is in a doses uh, independent manner. Okay, even if it is fresh food, yeah, uh, such, uh, as mentioned by Prof. Zakaria. So we have to to maintain the balance. Uh, when we are uh, healthy, we have we can ha we can eat uh, in the full form of the fresh food. But if we, if we are sick, yeah. We can we can consume uh, pharmaceutical food, uh, and then we can eat uh, medical food. Yeah, that contain that contain bioactive compound from the food, extracted from the food. So so it depends on our condition. We can, but normally we we are it is healthy if if we consume uh, fresh food in the whole manner because the the nutrient is still a whole not not no decrease yeah because the processing technology is uh, reduce the the nutrient normally okay 
So it's it's no 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 problem, <laughs> I think. So now I I would like to share uh, or, or focus only on how the food bioactive compound uh, modulate the the that, to ha how the food bioactive compound uh, modulate our immune system. This is the food biotic compound uh, that I got it from uh, this information. I got it from, from books yeah, that uh, explain the nutraceutical and functional food. Yeah? So th there is a dietary fiber, uh, fructo orgosaccharide, polyol, uh, sugar alcohol, protein, and then fatty acid, phospholipid, water soluble vitamin, several, yeah, vitamin B, pyridoxine, cyanocobalamin, folic acid, and ascorbic acid. And then uh, also fat soluble vitamin, uh, especially omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid, uh, which is a kind of polyunsaturated fatty acid. And then macro mineral, natrium, kalium, uh, uh, calcium and then ferrum, micro mineral, selenium, zinc, cuprum. This is the metal enzyme that uh, that activates uh, our enzyme, yeah, uh, so that the enzyme can work normally. And then the non nutrient component, yeah, phenolic compound, simple phenol, coumarin, and then isoprenoid, terpenoid, carotene, and, and so on. Uh, also the microbial probiotic, but now I focus on these two uh, food components uh, category or component. Uh, how how this sorry, how this uh, component biotic component enhance our immune system for the non-specific immune response and then for the non-specific uh, also for the cellular and humoral that the categories as a specific immune response that already mentioned by Ibu Francisca and Prastakuya. So how the biotic compound what blood immune, immune function? Now this is the information uh, based on the research in the last of the 19th century, I think. Yeah. The when we eat, yeah, bean, banana, milk, some fish, okay, not all, and poultry, we'll get pyridoxine because this food is rich in pyridoxine. Okay, so we can add this kind of food in our daily menu or diet. Okay, uh, this pyridoxine affect the even humoral and cellular mediated immune. Yeah, the research noted that administration of the 50 microgram milligram per day, okay, for two months, for two months, yeah, and uh, administered to the to the healthy subject. Uh, at the clinical trial phase one, it is revealed or it is so, so that this administration is increases in methogen stimulation, meaning uh, uh, there is a proliferation of, of uh, immunosol immunocompetence, especially lymphocyte. Okay, and then also. Uh, Lymphocyte, T lymphocyte, yeah, and then production of interleukin 2. And administration of 210 to 600 milligram per week will increase also lymphocyte proliferation okay, of lymphocyte. If the uh, lymphocyte proliferation is increased, meaning that there are many uh, cell T. Yeah, that uh, helping or coordinating with other cell in 
in uh, against the pathogen. Okay. And when we we have meat, we 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 eat meat, especially red meat, fish, milk, cheese, and egg. We we'll get vitamin B twenty. Oh, 20, 12. Oh, we will get cyanocobalamin because this is food rich in this vitamin, this water soluble vitamin. It also affect the lymphocyte proliferation, also increase the bactericidal activity, cell immunocompetence, and administer 10, 1000 mic mic microgram per month uh, intramuscular rate, maintain our normal profile of white blood cell and neutrophil. You know, neutrophil is uh, one of cell immunocompetent that, uh, that have an uh, important role in the, in the, in the phagocytosis, phagocytosis of the pathogen. Okay. And then administer uh, amount of 3,500. 3, Microgram for several day corrected our neutrophil normal profile. So this this vitamin uh, especially uh, increase the cellular immunity. Yeah. Uh, also, it is it is helping. It is uh, make the neutrophil strong. Okay. Uh, in the immune response. And then the, sorry. The, oh, sorry, sorry. MCM. When we have our, and we, when we have our menu, that compose of this food, this kind of food, namely broccoli, Brussels sprout, because it's cucumber, okay? Leafy green vegetable, like cabbage, spinach, pea, chickpea, and kidney bean, will get the folic acid. This folic acid is really important, especially for the pregnant women. Now, administer 10, Milligram per day, folic acid increase the activity, phagocytic activity of the neutrophil. Okay. And how about the biotin? It's too big, so we cannot read the last one. Uh, biotin, biotin, uh, it is a coenzyme catalyzed carboxylation reaction. It it is uh, in uh, many food. It's many in in many food. And administer about ten milligram per day biotin. Increase the lymphocyte mediated suppressor activity. So T suppressor uh, activity is increased uh, uh, by consuming or uh, about ten milligram. So when we we know when we know the concentration, the level of uh, biotic compound that. <clears throat> that reveal that not uh, increases our or enhancing our immune system. We can we have to convert this bioactive compound to the fresh food, okay, for the the healthy subject. So maybe uh, this one. Uh, Fifty milligram per day per dosal posat. We can we can eat about uh, seventy gram of the peanut, something like that. Okay, okay. That is uh, the oh no one more the vitamin of the water soluble vitamin, namely ascorbic acid. There is much in the in the vitamin is uh, we can find much in the guava. The guava is the, the highest uh, uh, content of vitamin C. The second one is broccoli, spinach, uh, kiwi, cabbage, potato, and, and kiwi. Now, this vitamin 
uh, involved in the or increase the bactericidal activity, and then the locomotion of neutrophil and macrophage, the resistance to microbial infection, and energy to microbacterial antigen, and then also uh, increase, enhance the cell mediated immunity, antibody and proliferative responses of the T cell and B cell. Uh, administer one and three gram per day for week. It, it is it is high, yeah. For three weeks, the increase the natural neutrophil motility and lymphocyte replication also. But administer 500 milligram now also increase proliferative uh, response. Uh, administer 10 gram per day, lymphocyte proliferation and antibody response. Okay, uh, this is uh, there is also a synergies effect of the vitamin C and vitamin E. Administer uh, administer administration of the uh, one gram vitamin C and then plus 800 international unit vitamin E will increase lymphocyte proliferation uh, for physical less physical active subject. Like us. <laughs> and now for the how the the lipid soluble vitamin enhance our immune function. Uh, for beta carotene, it uh, we will get from water. Yeah, it will protect our phagocyte cell from antioxidative damage because uh, the beta carotene uh, acts as an antioxidant. It also enhances the NB cell proliferative response, stimulates effective T cell function, promote and production of cytokine, increase macrophage, cytotoxic T cell, NK cell, tumor cell capacities. And this is the review from the research administration of 180 milligram per day for two weeks for phase one uh, clinical trial, increase the helper, and then administration of the three. Uh, three, uh, 30, 30 uh, up to 189 milligram per day for several weeks will increase circulating the helper and in cell. How about vitamin A? Vitamin E, A, uh, that we can find much in liver, fish, frost, <coughs> also broccoli, carrot, and dark leafy green, and sweet potato. It will make our resistance to infection. Yeah. And then modifying epithelial integrity, okay. and then also uh, <clears throat> enhance our specific and non-specific immune response. Vitamin D, we can find much in. We can find we can uh, get from oily fish such as salmon, herring, and mackerel, and then red meat, and then liver and egg yolk. It will. Uh, Act as a immunostimulatory agent of non-specific immune response, yeah. Uh, but also in the cellular immune response because it increases the lymphocyte proliferation and then uh, uh, influence or member of mononuclear phagocyte cell, yeah, neutrophil, macrophage, uh, yeah, that. And then uh, vitamin E. Uh, we can we can get from vegetable oil, so we we can consume oil. Yeah, we can consume oil uh, because it is also high in vitamin E. Okay, and then uh, the 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 oil the good oil vegetable oil is uh, uh, corn oil. Yeah, because the uh, also, because the oil is also in, uh, in also composed of also contain the uh, PUFA polyunsaturated fatty acid. Okay. Uh, it will maintain our immune function and then increases humoral also cell mediated immune response and inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis. So it is also involved in the uh, allergy response. Yeah. Also, it will decrease our free radical formation because vitamin E is also an antioxidant in our intracellular 
So uh, it will uh, protect the cell from the uh, auto oxidative damage. Yeah. Uh, the nutrient component, the active compound, yeah, uh, I mean the lipid component also modulated immune function, yeah, namely uh, omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid that uh, you can get from peanut oil, sunflower oil, and corn oil. It will improve or enhance or uh, helping in the anti antibody production. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, linoleic acid uh, required for the normal propagation and maturation of cell mediated responses. Also, this one, gamma linoleic acid, decreases, decreases the inflammation and joint tissue injury. How about uh, the omega-3 offer can be from fish. It will improve cell mediated immune function yeah, via alteration of prostaglandin and leukotriene synthesis pathway and then and then decrease uh, lymphocyte proliferation of, uh, of, of, of an abnormal cell yeah and then inflammatory and autoimmune disease autoimmune disease and then also uh, increases the cytokine production for for example of uh, such as interleukin 1 2 and 6 also uh, increase the neutrophil chromatexis yeah uh, and suppress the pro inflammatory uh, mediators yeah and then the inflammatory disease that is asthma and type 1 and the arginine also, uh, it is it is an amino acid, uh, non-essential that we can get from nut, meat, seed, and then legumes, uh, also seaweed. It increases our peripheral blood lymphocyte plastogenesis, increase the helper and ratio the helper to the cytotoxic, yeah, from the cell T, improve our immune other immune parameter during the physiological stress. Increase lymphocyte also population, uh, maintenance of our lymphokine, activated and cell activity, okay, and then regulation the metagenesis. How about the glutamine? Glutamine maintain the intestinal immune system. Okay, and the, also secretory immunoglobulin A synthesis. This is uh, like the uh, the bioactive compound found in the bengkuang, yeah. Uh, also apa, increasing the intestinal immune system. And then uh, also helping in the prevention of bacterial translocation from the gut following the stress of birth, surgery, and trauma. This is the peptide of thrombin that I, I study, I observe. Yeah. Uh, I get this peptide from the um, bean protein extract, and then the the protein uh, hydrolyzed by the enzyme, and then I get the peptide fraction, and then uh, we 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 look uh, we observe how this peptide uh, have the anti-allergy effect, yeah. Uh, I do it in vitro using uh, red blood RD something, yeah, cells. And then I count the, the enzyme that indicate the degeneration process. So if, if the beta hexosa minigase is uh, small, decreased, mean that uh, the anti the, the active by compound is having the anti allergy uh, characteristics and then I look also uh, how this peptide being peptide 
ya that, uh, that there is in the hydrolysate protein hydrolysate of bean suppress the immunoglobulin A production. Yeah, if the immunoglobulin is, is decreased, meaning that the, the dietary compound peptide different is uh, has an anti allergic characteristic. This is the selenium uh, from other research. You can get from muscle, meat, cereals, also grain and dairy product. So when we have this uh, knowledge of food stores uh, rich in the, the nutrient component, so we better we we, we start from uh, we start to to put this kind of food this kind of food in our uh, daily food consumption. Selenium express of specific and non-specific cellular immunity response. And then also control excessive production of peroxide in cell because this metal enzyme helping the glutathione peroxidase for uh, eliminating uh, the peroxide. Decreased production of prostaglandin, yeah, so it will also in, involve in the allergic also. Decrease eicosanide biosynthesis, promote possible immune response, increase in cell cell activity so it will help uh, uh, our body to to uh, to to kill to kill the cancer or infectious these uh, cells yeah or immature disease immature cell by NK cell also uh increase the bacteria bacteria and viral infection Uh, this is the one that I did it, the research, the one that mentioned by Prof. Francisca. I involved in the project on ginger immuno enhanced. Yeah, uh, I did it in the in vitro in vitro level. So the the simple simple phenol, phenolic, namely ginger and sugar, uh, reveal in at in vitro system, increase the proliferation of B and T cell. Yeah, I count the cell using the beta counter that beta counter that can uh, that can read the cell uh, taken by the radioactive radioactive timidine, yeah, hydrogen radioactive, and then it it also increase the function of Satellite of the NCASA. I use the Leconia K562 for the cell line, some cancer cell line, and then uh, compared to the control, it, it increased the, the apoptosis of this, this NCAS, the, the cancer uh, uh, lysis, lysis by the, the NCASA. And then it also decreased free radical. Yeah. Uh, I can I measure the total free radical in the cell, yeah, using flow cytometry yeah, that can uh, measure that can uh, yeah measure or, or count the the fluorescence uh, uh, come from the the cell that I I I, I put the fluorescent marker in the cell, so it it can be um, measured by the, the flow cytometer. And then it also decreased the amount of the heat, the height uh, in cell, because this is the indicator of the, the uh, oxidative process. Okay, uh, it is a product of the uh, lipid peroxide product in the cell. So uh, the panelic compound of the ginger uh, has a hydroxyl. Uh, Group good, yeah. They can uh, donor this electron to the free radical, so it neutralizes the radical. Free radical. It also uh, noted that the active compound increase the ratio CD4 and CD8. Uh, this is the indicator of the infectious viral infection. Okay, so I did it also. Uh, 
we 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 uh, we, we administer this this the compound to the the HIV uh, AIDS uh, patient. It's uh, it 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 show that this increase the CD4 and CD8. So so the virus uh, will not uh, binding to the receptor PCR receptor, and then it it will not it it not it is it is not uh, uh, bother or uh, disturb the antibody production. How about nucleotide? Nucleotide, nucleotide, uh, namely purine and pimidine, yeah, that rich in some fish, seafood, some fish, um, up to the meat, okay. Uh, it involved in development of cellular immune response. Oh, sorry. Okay. Also, um, important in the cellular energetic and metabolism. It also increases the cellular immunity, especially macrophage activation and the helper population. And then also, besides cellular immunity, it also uh, affects the humoral immunity. This is the data that I got from my research uh, for my thesis, for my dissertation. It's really good. Uh, this figure so that uh, the ginger beta compound uh, will give the optimal effect yeah, on the immune function at certain doses. So meaning that even it is fresh food and component by active compound uh, will give the, the positive effect on immune response uh, at certain doses. That's why we have to, to study, to explore, uh, how much, how much uh, food better compound that that we have to consume uh, in order to to get the optimal effect on the immune function? Okay, this is the the potential mechanism. How the how the better compound, how the ginger, namely ginger oil and sugar, uh, affect the food immune. Uh, this ginger through his hydroxyl group uh, binding to the TCR, the cell receptor, and then this binding stimulate uh, the the enzymatic process in the in the cell. Yeah, TCR is in the surface of the cell. Yeah, and then this binding stimulate the other enzymatic process in the cell including the uh, protein kinase C that involved in the proliferation of the cell. Okay, so the cell T becomes two. Uh, one is cell effector and then also uh, production of differentiate into the uh, memory cell. Excuse me, Prof. Teja. This is the other effect. Okay. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. Wait. I give you one more minute. Yeah. Right. One moment. Okay. This is only so how the how the uh, ginger beta compound as an antioxidant and then they neutralize the lipid peroxide. And this is the same uh, the same mechanism. And then also this one the same mechanism on how the beta compound uh, neutralize the the lipid uh, peroxidite. And then this also uh, data showing uh, the effect on the immune function. This is, this is the NK cell. Uh, uh, this is that figure uh, showing that the NK cell, uh, the 
gingerbread compound increase the satiety of the buying cell. Okay, mungkin ini ya yeah, this is only the figure how how the anti allergic res, uh, process is uh, done is is occur. This is the the bean that I already mentioned before. Uh, had the protein that I extracted using this method, uh, and then I also frax. Uh, this is the fractionation uh, figure of the the protein, the protein hydrolysis, and then this is how we make the uh, infrared analysis, uh, and then. Uh, measure the immunoglobulin. This is the data. Uh, it's also so that the beta compound will give a uh, optimal effect on the certain level of the uh, biotic compound. Yeah, this is only the the figure that that show that so B so B is uh, has anti allergenicity allergenic meaning that if uh, soybean uh, uh, can produce uh, anti allergic yeah but not for the other uh, bean. I think this is the data, Pak Jayus, and then uh, this is the calculation. Okay. Okay. So uh, let, let's let's for us the when we know the, the healthy food, uh, let food be our medicine. So before we sick, we eat a uh, healthy food, variety of vegetables and fruits, and then fish. There are many kind of fish that we can buy, and then we can make. Uh, menu. Okay, thank you, Pak Jayus. Okay, Prof. Teja. Yeah. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Uh, uh, we, you have been showing about the plenty of bioactive compound yeah. our foods. And there's also so many uh, mechanism or also mode of action of this uh, bioactive compound from the food. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh, Audience, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we still have, no, I think, we still have one more uh, speaker, which is Professor uh, Christopher Hanujaya. Before we move on to the second speaker for the second session, um, I think I'll, I'll need a bit of time to introduce Professor Dr. Christopher Hani. Christopher Hanivijaya. As she is a lecturer and researcher in IPB, IPB University, which is in Bogor. I'm sure that you know that you know much that uh, university. Okay, Professor Christopher Hanivijaya, she got her bachelor degree from IPB University. It was in 19. 82, focus on agriculture product technology. And her master degree, she got it in 1987 from Hokkaido University and also in agricultural chemistry institution. Uh, her PhD degree, she got it from Hokkaido University as well. So the same university as uh, her masters, and she got it in 1991. Okay. He has been publishing more than 70 journal. I think I can uh, pop, up, no, pop up, just uh, read the most recent publication, which is in 2020. Uh, entitled Umami Fraction Obtained from Water Soluble Black of Red, red Onchok and Black Indonesian Fermented Strain and Peanut Product, which is published mm -hmm. in Journal of Science. Okay, um, she also been. Uh, Writing a lot of book, uh, I think the most <clears throat> related to our uh, discussion today, yeah, it, the book which is published in 2015, uh, 
The title is General Tees of Mental Components, uh, public by Springer. And her position, uh, she has been in PB University as a lecturer and researcher uh, for 38 years. Okay. And her current, post not current position from 2005 onwards, uh, she is a president of Associasi Flakor Fragment Indonesia, Indonesian Association of Flakor and Fragrance, and also is the head of Food Chemistry Division, Food Science and Technology Department, Faculty of Agricultural Technology at IPB University. And from 1998, uh, she is a coordinator IPB Hokkaido University Corporation. I think that uh, that's the main CV that I can uh, read to the audience. And Vijaya, she will present her topic today focus on pharmaceutical food for enhancing immune defense system okay uh, we hope that uh, this uh, topic will uh, you know will give more information to us on how uh, to prepare or how our food system or our bioactive food can enhance our immune system so can uh, prepare uh, our food uh, properly. Without any further, uh, without any further ado, uh, Professor Vijaya, please enjoy your time, uh, 40 minutes from now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Vijayas, for your generous uh, introduction. Uh, Good afternoon, distinguished uh, guests, uh, honorable speakers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and dear students. Uh, it is uh, my great honor to be in this uh, forum. Uh, thanks to God for the Almighty for giving us this opportunity. And uh, hopefully we can share each other what we know and we learn a lot from each other. For that one, I would like to extend my deep gratitude to Professor Tejasari and all the teams, uh, the uh, committee, which prepared this uh, very outstanding uh, forum. And it's glad for me to look again, although uh, in the Zoom with Professor Sugahara, it's a long time. And I think, uh, as you know, uh, this is very hard for me as the topic is not really online with my real field of study, but I learned a lot about bioactive compounds. And I have something that that's why maybe the committee asked me to do this presentation, at least uh, from the, uh, yeah, the CV, you can see it. And thank you to remind me to revise my syntax to update that one so long time ago. Okay, so uh, for uh, giving you more information, let me share the presentation. So hopefully you can uh, see this one. Is this properly? Can you see this one? Hopefully, yeah. So I will try to slide show the, where is the slide show? Okay. Everything is okay. Are you? Can you it's see right. this one? Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, so uh, I tried to find out. Actually, I really um, surprised when uh, Muteja offered me pharmaceutical food because for me, pharmaceutical food is beyond my ability. Pharmaceutical food usually prepared by somebody uh, working. Uh, for the uh, nutrients uh, clinical, something like that. And that is not for the normal people, I mean the healthy people, but for the sick people. So I bring back to the uh, functional food and nutraceuticals and uh, hopefully it's not overlap with other, I'm just so afraid. But at least let's have a standardized our uh, 
expecting something because uh, there are so many different kinds of definition about functional food. And in this case, I use this kind of uh, definition that has been uh, offering by the European Commission Concerted Action on Functional Food Science in Europe, UFOSE, in coordination with uh, the International Life Science Institute, ILC Europe. And it said that uh, food product can only be considered functional if together with the basic nutritional impact, it has beneficial effect on one more or more function of you, the human organism, thus either improving the general and physical uh, conditions uh, or and decreasing the risk of the evolution of disease. The amount of intake and form of the functional food should be as it is normally expected for dietary purposes. Therefore, it could not be in the form of pill capsule or just normal food. That is the functional food. It's different if we talk about nutraceuticals. And in the nation, actually, we have already the definition regarding the association. Uh, by the way, I'm also the uh, chairperson for the Association Society for Functional Food and Nutraceuticals in Indonesia, at least until today. I don't know after this because we will have an, uh, the new election in a very short time. But this is the, uh, the result of the focus group discussion that we have uh, three years ago. So once again, it can be, of course, the raw one or the processed food. Because you know, we have also a lot of uh, raw food that is uh, possible to become very uh, functional for our body. But whatever it is, uh, it is a food, so it's not a drug. Yeah, maybe uh, somebody sometimes is a make a mix uh, different. What you call it? Uh, a translation or uh, not translation, but uh, interpretation about this uh, word. But for us in um, food area, we just said that. Uh, it is a food. So the impact should be obtained in the normal amount as a food. So we cannot too much claim for something. And at least we know that it has been developed to improve our life. So different with a drug. Drugs should be taken in the specific dose with specific target and uh, it should be for uh, not a healthy person. And the nutraceuticals is something that we call is a bioactive compounds which is maintaining the fitness of the human body. So it's maybe in the a special, uh, what you call it, substances or chemicals that is we found it in the food. So this is the definition that uh, usually we follow on, but for the nutraceuticals definition in Indonesia, we are still ongoing for focus group discussion. It is interesting why I put something local here because uh, it's said that, however, functional food are not universal. That is the one that we have to know. If not, then we can see every functional food. Uh, every food is functional, of course, but uh, it is necessary to consider local aspect. I'm was, uh, I'm so glad because I have a Yoshihara uh, sensei, Sugihara sensei, uh, which is also a uh, taking a lot of attention with what we have in Indonesia, because as you see that uh, the, the ability of us to, to, to study really scientific sound like Sugahara Sensei has presented is very limited. But in the other hand, we have this point that we have what we call is cultural and habitual dietary pattern that is different from its part. And Indonesia, the one who is very rich for that one. And it's, we must know about that one. So functional food can have what we call is additional health benefit. Yes, this is the one that I said. Indonesian have so rich in sources, natural sources or local wisdom with more than 17,000 island, 1,000 ethnic group, 3,000 more animal species and 47 plant species. The one that I 
uh, got it from the compass. I don't know exactly how much it is. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, traditionally known immune booster actually in our food. One now is very trending is uh, what we call important point, which is a, it's a part of somebody call it also bumbu pawan. Bumbu pawan, pawan is mean uh, kitchen, bumbu is seasoning. So basically seasoning in Javanese cuisine that is containing, especially there is also a special uh, amount. Yeah? So they call it uh, like a half of our thumbs and so on. But at least it comes with the ginger, turmeric, galangal, and there is different kinds of galangal. We have hundreds of galangal uh, and Kencur Laos is different galangal, but usually in English it's all galangal and bay leaf, lemongrass, and so on. And we have one very traditional functional drink only in one. Uh, yes, we call it ethnic group. Hundred of ethnic group, they have a lot of something, and it's already uh, known from the beginning how the ginger or the kurkumalonga, uh, kurkurmin, and then uh, the galangal one has a lot of compounds that can be induced. The one that already said by uh, Professor Francisca or Subutejasari to induce our immune body, but. It's not always raw, my friends, because for example, sugar will be produced a lot when it, we dried it. So we need to know about this one. And sometimes, uh, yeah, it's a kind of situation that God doesn't provide us the what we need for the raw, good food. I'm not doubt about that one. That is the best. But sometimes we cannot access because the way the plan the animal provide us with natural is seasoning, yeah, seasonally, and only not every time we want to eat it's prepared. So that's why we have to think about that one. But I have to stop, <laughs> yes, because uh, it's already mentioned from for the three uh, speakers, and I don't want to make you the hungry man in an angry man because it's now it's really really a very late one. So <laughs> please. I want to skip a little bit with uh, another issue now uh, re regarding with this, what we call it immune booster. So uh, in IPB, uh, we do with kind of things that is what we they call is uh, using of inter uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah? So we go with the molecular docking and database that is uh, good for us, which is very difficult now to come to the wet lab. And also good for us in Indonesia, we, just, we don't have a good bet as far as I know, in the, especially in this situation with the COVID pandemic. And it's utilize, uh, this utilization of artificial intelligence in screening the potential candidate of local nutraceutical is so tremendously. So uh, now the, the time is jump with the, uh, yeah, in Indonesia, we call it not direct hitung, but direct. Uh, Ukur, yeah? so, jump so fast. When when I was a student, I should try to check one by one, one by one, which one is uh, potential. And suddenly I know when I got that one, oh, that is the best. Then I find uh, another thing is better. <laughs> and then when I finish with the one, there is a kind of a publication. No, this is better. So, so fast and so frustrating sometimes. Yeah, uh, hopefully that is not happen. Uh, when you choose your, your partner. <laughs> because if you use this one for uh, calculating the ex, the, <laughs> no, no, it's, I, I should stop this one. I always come with uh, some of joke and somebody will angry. <laughs> yeah, because uh, most of us is already mature. But this one is a good choice to, to, to screen for what we have to go. And uh, yeah, we can find a lot of things like Sugahara Sensei fine. Uh, Faster, so we can help Sugara since we come to the the, the more uh, prominent uh, biodiversity that we have before it's missing somewhere. So let me introduce this one. This is still uh, not mine, but uh, from my uh, research uh, center that is uh, what we call is uh, biopharmacotropical. Uh, this is what we call an excellent uh, research center uh, in Indonesia for biopharmaca. And it was worked with the 
it is still under review, but it's uh, very interesting for me because this is a good tools and I want to share to you. That's why I asked, can I make this one? And this is a visual screening of uh, what we call it uh, Indonesian herbal common as COVID-19, yeah, who is supportive the therapy. And this is machine learning for my pharmacore for modeling approaches. And this is the way uh, I think it's also good to find the nutraceuticals yeah, uh, in the near future. So they just use the, uh, this is a joint research between uh, UI, University of Indonesia and IPB. And this uh, by informatic research through computer. So it screen any substances with potential effect of virus protein using database and molecular docking. So this is uh, a kind of uh, more computerized, but we need also the, the local information. And it looks like that when we tried uh, several kinds of, uh, yeah, uh, of uh, substances uh, that is found in Indonesian local sources, they have the hesperidin here which is very good for corona SARS main protein that is already uh, uh, mentioned before. So uh, by this product, they find several candidate substances is very potential for fetal COVID-19 protection or uh, candidate but with very, uh, yeah, very, very fast. And that's why maybe some Indonesian people uh, remember suddenly the guava, the red guava become uh, the prima, prima donna, we call it uh, fruits uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic, because it said that uh, the, from that study, we have a guava, red guava particularly is very good for natural product or natural food to against, uh, to protect us from the COVID, yeah? to give us pro COVID, 19 prevention because it has several compounds that it should be reported for having activities and they, it has a lot of hesperidin. It's already been predicted to be able uh, in preventing the exposure of SARS or CoV-2 into human body by inhibiting the S protein SARS, uh, CoV-2 binding with ACE2 receptors. Of course, this is not finished. This is just the first time. That's why I, I was so impressed. That is always the uh, Japanese sensei doing something. So silence, not too much talking, but they do a lot with the scientific proof, like Sugahara sensei also do it. So after this one, maybe we still did a lot of what uh, it has been done, like uh, Professor uh, Sugahara and also Muteja Sari and so on. The wet light, the toxicity, how much effective clinical and so on. That is already uh, mentioned by, by Muteja Sari. Hundreds of functional food ingredients reported posting immune health. And the, among that one is vitamin C1. And we are lucky because we have a lot of this juice in our daily life. So for me, it's better to not the nutraceuticals, not the compound, but I want to eat this one because there will be maybe synergism. So this is the function of food itself. But maybe one day if they, they, you don't have this kind of fruits, yeah, to process that one and make it available, although not as good not, uh, as uh, the normal uh, raw one is also a possibility. Okay, before we go for uh, <laughs> too much, debate after this one. Let's move to the next uh, requested topic. Uh, this is the one that I know why uh, I have been asked maybe, hopefully not uh, L4, yeah? lu lagi, lu lagi, or I4, itu lagi, itu lagi. But at least I just follow what Professor uh, Francisca said, we have to follow the WHO tips. But this one, uh, we not just like um, uh, uh, a horse with the uh, uh, ice binding, something like that, yeah? We can go for many things that we have because maybe uh, in this case, the WHO just get the risk in information not from uh, our countries, yeah? And uh, to 
thing about that one, that is one essential oil that is very good according to Professor uh, Francisca as well. By the way, Professor Francisca is also my my uh, partner during the uh, the first time we studied about ginger. <laughs> yeah, I, I still remember we have the, the, the uh, supervised student. But now, sorry, back to this topic, the Eucalyptus globulus that is now become very famous also in Indonesia as eucalyptus. But sometimes it has been mixed with what we call is kayu putih. Eucalyptus and kayu putih is different. So kayu putih we call is also as kayu put, yeah? Kayu put oil and eucalyptus oil is something different actually because it's derived from, extracted from different, uh, yeah, different family, different genus. Yeah, because uh, the kaju put is from Melaluka kaju putih. And Indonesian is very rich in uh, Melaluka kaju putih, particularly for the uh, kaju putih subspecies. This is 100% origin in Indonesia. And uh, I got a lot of information. I'm lucky because I uh, know uh, Dr. Rimawanto, which is study a lot of uh, from the beginning, uh, from the uh, biotin of uh, eucalyptus plant, something like that. So it's come particularly in Ambon, but now it's already cultivated and also produced in several parts of Indonesia. And for me, <laughs> actually, I should say that I'm not, uh, yeah, Kajuput uh, plant breeder or something like I know a lot about that one. No, I just suddenly have this kind of uh, idea because I, as a graduated from uh, Japanese uh, university, I think Boteja also, uh, Prof. Sugahara and uh, several pine plant uh, friends knows that Obiage is part of the tradition. And I have to go back to go back for the, due to the, my uh, duty to uh, Japan. And it's easily for me, once again, maybe some student and also some uh, participant has heard that one. It is easier for me to bring Obiage from Japan to Indonesia, just only considering the pocket. Uh, yeah. But to bring from Indonesia to Japan, Obiage is not that easy. Because uh, usually it should be handy, affordable price. It, we have to share a lot of things. And I also have several kind of idea because I'm study about a flavor and functional active compound. I have to, to make something with the functional activity. So something like a functional food and it should be in the local ingredients because I want to represent in Indonesia, but mostly it besides have functional active, it shows we also uh, have the sensory acceptability. I don't want to make people stress because it will induce your uh, oxidized metabolism and yeah, and it's reduced. When you stress, don't forget your immune condition also will be reduced. So be please be happy, not much stress. Although sometimes I make my students stress. <laughs> okay, so this is the product that I um, create. So it's a little bit something unusual and I know from the beginning so many things uh, yeah because the challenges in Indonesia can you put oil is well known as a topical so it's not for internal but from a lot of uh, literature that we read, read on uh, we have a lot of in proof that from the beginning uh, I mean not the beginning I mean the previous time uh, yeah is a fog medicinal that use also a lot of for internal or something. But for me, the best is because it's half one and woody flower, yeah, like eucalyptus. So that is the keyword. It's like eucalyptus, yeah. So um, a lot of activity has been uh, informed and we just thinking about the expectorant and antiseptic. That is the first idea we do with the activities of this uh, product. But it's nice to know that it's also insect replants because uh, Sugahara sensei always said there are a lot of mosquitoes in Indonesia. And it's also relaxant. Yeah. 
So that's why when the baby crying, if you will put the uh, uh, yeah, kajibut oils, they become calm. And there is somebody who studies about this one. And that's good for the people who has a uh, yeah, problem with the COVID-19 as well. But no, go back first because it's food. So you have to make sure that uh, the safe of the safety of the uh, ingredient and we do already with the acute toxicity for the candy itself. And yes, so long time and we have a lot. Uh, this is the first samples uh, of uh, patents. We have already another two patents. Last week, we have another one, the new one. And then uh, we have also already commercialized this one. So there is a lot of story with this one. And <laughs> you can imagine it has been started 1996. But uh, the one thing <laughs> uh, from the beginning is nothing to do with Good morning. Anda pasti tahu kayu putih yang biasanya jadi minyak gosok untuk menghangatkan badan kan? Nah, sebuah inovasi dari Institut Pertanian Bogor membuat kayu putih menjadi permen yang tentunya aman untuk dimakan dan pastinya berhasil. Peneliti dari Departemen Ilmu Teknologi Pangan Fakultas Teknologi Pertanian Institut Pertanian Bogor berinovasi membuat permen berbahan dasar kayu putih. Digawangi oleh Profesor Hani Wijaya, tim ini melakukan penelitian sejak tahun 1996 untuk memindahkan khasiat kayu putih ke dalam bentuk permen. Akhirnya terciptalah kayu putih candy yang aman, berkhasiat dan bisa diproduksi massal. Proses pembuatannya ternyata sangat sederhana. Bahan dasar minyak kayu putih hasil penyulingan dimasak, lalu dicampur dengan glukosa, gula pasir, dan peppermint. Terus masak hingga mencapai suhu 140 derajat Celcius. Adunan permen ini kemudian dituang dalam loyang permen dan didinginkan. Jadi uh, tentunya ide permen kayu putih ini adalah untuk membuat uh, produk permen yang mempunyai cita rasa khas Indonesia, kemudian juga mempunyai khasiat yang dalam hal ini mempunyai uh, sifat fisiologis aktif. Khasiat lain dari permen kayu putih ini adalah penghangat tubuh dan aroma yang keluar dari mulut ketika memakan permen ini juga dapat mengusir nyamuk. Permen ini telah memiliki sertifikat paten dan mendapat pengakuan sebagai Asian Food Product di Konferensi Produk Singapura. Tim dari IPB ini juga akan mengeluarkan varian permen kayu putih baru dalam waktu dekat. Dedi Jumhana melaporkan untuk NET. Hmm, sesuatu yang baru nih, kayu putih dijadikan permen. Tapi kalau misalnya bagi Anda di rumah yang apa ya mencintai tanaman tanaman herbal yang untuk menjadikan obat-obatan kalau anda punya daun kayu putihnya ini sebenarnya sangat bagus sekali karena khasiatnya bisa dijadikan sebagai obat luka obat batuk pereda nyeri dan juga pengusir nyamuk hmm. nyamuk nyamuk kamu maksudnya namanya bisa juga ramah betul nggak sih kalau misalnya sakit gigi gitu terus misalnya pakai kayu putih siri jadi sih jadi semua <laughs> benar nggak Kamu pernah minum kayu putih? Minum? Ya enggak, ya. karena itu jadi itu jadi salah satu pengobatan untuk Obatnya, sakit gigi ya, juga. dari daunnya tuh mungkin ditumbuk okay. gitu kan ada zat-zat hmm. aktifnya itu bisa juga. Tapi kalau misalnya diminum, ini, ini kan dimakan. Kayu dimakan, permen kayu nah, putih. Kan? Pertanyaannya, ada yang pernah minum? Ada yang pernah minum sih? Oh, saya pernah minum <laughs> kayu putih. <laughs> Kebetulan dulu oh. waktu yang morning show. Anda pasti tak... Oke. Okay. Uh, sorry. Waktunya karena tidak ada, tapi ya itulah awal bagaimana semua juga uh, banyak bertanya-tanya. Oh sorry, this is Indonesian. Uh, sorry, this is an Indonesian because uh, actually I want to make a translation, but I don't have time already. But actually this is a kind of uh, yeah, uh, not a new one, but it suddenly comes uh, two weeks ago again. But actually it has been taken from uh, 2000 or something like that or 2000 time I forgot but at least uh, this is not the new one and, yeah. the and then uh, it's become uh, more and more uh, coming to this yeah because of another issue that we will talk about so let me talk uh, about this one so uh, yeah 
we have a lot of application, of course, but uh, the more important for this one is uh, coming suddenly when the COVID-19 is, yeah, is around. So, uh, yeah, I have been uh, asking about how can the kayu putih uh, or keju put oil can be something that help the people for uh, against the the attacks of the virus and uh, I try uh, my best to find out because uh, it's impossible for me because I'm also not so uh, an expert I don't have lab uh, laboratory and so on I just try to use my knowledge and uh, looking for uh, the information for the report uh, we got that that's why the uh, ketchup oil and eucalyptus oil should be uh, sometime uh, just mix each other because uh, it's all have the same dominance volatiles that is 1,8 cyanel. And 1,8 cyanel has been reported for uh, having anti-inflammation. But actually in uh, ketchup oil, we have also different kinds of uh, Compounds like alpha terpenoids, yeah, a lot of terpenoids there, and uh, it gave uh, a little bit different for the uh, flavor, although dominantly uh, the same, yeah. And this is the kaju uh, yeah, sorry, sometimes they call it uh, eucalyptus, kaju putol, uh, kaju putol, yeah, something like that. So we just use the kaju putol because it's already mentioned in several, uh, yeah, report as a communication for respiratory disease by Jurgen in 2014. There is also uh, information from Ray et al. regarding the inhibition of the world in influenza virus infection. Uh, in uh, mice pneumonia, yeah, uh, cause the mice pneumonia, and it can be combined for the virus, antivirus for influenza. And uh, Particularly for the coronavirus, it also has been uh, reported uh, by uh, Muller et al. that is uh, induced the immunity system by increasing the activity of IRF3 while reducing the activity of NFKB, which is trigger the inflammation. So uh, it has been already mentioned before, so I don't need to talk about. And the one that I more uh, confidence when it said by uh, when Sharma and Kaur reported in 2020, it said that the molecular docking approaches uh, uh, showed that the 1,8 signal is very potential as inhibitor of COVID-19. And as um, I mentioned before, the uh, main uh, kajiputol oil uh, compounds is 1,8 signal. But something is more uh, delighted me because uh, just recently, it's also come uh, in the biological chemistry and chemical bio biology. Uh, the works from our friends, uh, colleagues from uh, in Vietnam, it's really do with the evaluation on the inhibitory activity of COVID-19 of Bela Luka Kajupati oil, although it's still using the docking, sim uh, docking simulation. And it looks like from the uh, main uh, volatiles in a uh, Kaju puts oil is uh, giving the good, powerful anti-coronavirus activities, including the linol, cineol, yeah? and then they have also uh, glycol and so on. And mostly we have that one. And this is the 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 study using the once again the artificial technology, and they got how far uh, the docking uh, show us. The possibility of that compound, which is in the, uh, yeah, in the uh, kajiput oil. Sorry, it's just become un, un, yeah, unstructured again. But at least uh, from our study, we got that the limo cineol, this one, yeah, not this one. The one at senior is still there and still the major one. And then we have also menton, we have menthol, we have alpha terminal, our cario cariophyllene still in the candy. That's why uh, I just think about it's possibly uh, we get something better from uh, can you put candy as a immune booster or to help the, the uh, first gut 
yeah, the, the we call it the Ganda Depan, the the first line of uh, people who working to uh, to battles with the uh, COVID-19 because uh, it's candy, so the volatile will release uh, release with a long time, yeah, long lasting exposure. So just slowly, not just if you just use the volatiles, uh, it's just very easy to be uh, evaporated. And then, uh, yeah, there is a several kind of study, especially for docking, that is probably like that. And uh, don't forget that we also use this for influenza, uh, for medicines from the very ancient time. And then, uh, although somebody said, why it should be candy, but for me, uh, yeah, that is very important to make it as a candy so we can make it as a functional food because the sugar contains is a very good situation uh, to help you. When you are very busy, you cannot do everything, you cannot access the good food and so on and so on. Uh, I have my own experience when I very uh, subscribed with the candy that my mother gave me during the orientation during my student period because uh, I don't have time to eat everything and uh, yeah the situation is like that so uh, when I feel like want to faint because maybe the energy is not there so the candy also give us that kind of situation maybe also come with the 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 person in charge in uh, yeah the hospitals and so on and so on and the things is handy and ready anytime so with the request not this is not mine this is the request from the person who will work in that uh uh what we call is garda the pans come to me to ask whether they can have more that you put candy because uh, they feel it uh, already help for some people and with uh, the help of the Life of America, we opened the donation and amazingly, it's come with more than thousands. Yeah? Packs is more than 50, I mean, and we try to distribute everywhere. And uh, I'm so happy to see the face and the things that very important is they, they ask again, and they said that is a kind of, there are a lot of testimony. I don't want to say that one. I want to stop it several times, but they said, oh, don't, don't don't do it because they, they still need it and this is the the yeah the proof this is usually the one that uh, I, I send in the this kind of package but suddenly somebody sent me with this one there is a donation so maybe people who buy this is the package for uh, the commercial one so people should be buy and uh, send for the donation so the community self donation is there and one things uh, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> I maybe if I'm a trader or I'm a business person will be a little bit upset. But for me, because I'm a lecturer, I was so happy because it's mean what I made <laughs> is useful. So there is a lot of uh, competitors, new ones, especially like FOSS, they make it like this mean. And sometimes uh, I don't know, or somebody said this candy, but it's from Benkei Putih and so on. But at least this is what I want to say. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. So because time is still here, I want to show you a little bit different one. Uh, yeah. This is one package that I have. Oh, oh, sorry, this cannot do. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, I have a kind of, but it doesn't work now. Maybe because, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, I got a very nice, what I said, uh, sincere thanks from. <laughs> Okay, no problem. Okay, uh, if you want to see, I will show you one day. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, I got, this is from the doctors, the nurses, 
and the one who worked with the COVID-19, a kind of uh, appreciation that I never think that I will have that one. But maybe the question is, is really work for the COVID-19 virus? Honestly said, I really don't know because I didn't do myself with the COVID-19 virus. I just know, I just give and I just sell this one as a product what I, my purpose with the uh, collaboration with uh, dentistry of um, faculty of in the, uh, University of Indonesia, Professor Boy Bhatia, we just think that one for oral care, yeah? for oral care, not more than that one. But now the situation is like that and from the, uh, the floor, the, the real community is already in human. Most of them said that they need this. And that's why it's a long lasting, uh, always repeat order and some uh, doctors or uh, nurses uh, give the recommendation and ask me to, to send, uh, to help their patients and so on. But I think uh, we need to do more for this one. So hopefully I can work with uh, Sugahara Sensei and our friend, how to put this candy as an immune poster functional food which scientifically proven. Usually we do that one with what we call is refer pharmacology approach. So because it's already done there, but we need the uh, approach uh, of the scientific proven, uh, we have to do the, the real one, the real uh, from the, the one that uh, Prof. Sugara already said, in vitro, in vivo, ex vivo, and so on. But something that I can uh, share with you all, uh, my friends here, uh, maybe, uh, if we want to explore the efficacy or the potent uh, products, both nutraceutical or functional food or, or active compound, uh, we can use this uh, help with the molecular docking parts. So it's faster for us to, to go with the very big arrays. Yeah, because now the metathesis data is very uh, useful for uh, shorten the, the time and uh, have more, uh, what you call it, uh, bigger area to cover. Yeah? So the, and then the last one, yeah. I do believe that Indonesian have functional food, not only for the Indonesian, but for the world. That's why I always invited for many occasion in outside of Indonesia. Uh, to, to share about the functional, traditional, local food. So please don't forget and don't worry to study about something local because sometimes my student doesn't like it. They're just thinking about the inferiors. But you see, yeah, we have to learn from Asugahara Sensei. <laughs> he wants to come to help us to do that work. So please do before we finish. Sorry. I had to do my last job as a uh, association. <laughs> Please uh, remember that we have the what in Indonesia we call it Himpunan Pegiat Pangan Fungsional and Nutraceutical Indonesia, and uh, this is a part of the International Society for Nutraceutical and Functional Food. The, hopefully, we can give this kind of opportunity, but at least uh, on behalf of this ES and. SFFN because it's always <laughs> mixture each other. I want to really extend my sincere thanks to Sugahara Sensei, which always support us. He is always there, <laughs> so we we we, we really uh, appreciate it. And now we have already the journal. Uh, hopefully that you will send us uh, the. This is the second volume and the last part that then we can make this journal to uh, accredited as Sinta 2 accordingly. But we don't know, at least we have to finish it for the last one. So please, if you have any works with this one, don't hesitate to send us. Thank you very much for your kind attentions and I think I have to give back to the moderators. Time for a question. Yes, it's a little bit, two minutes maybe, but 
faster is better because now it's hungry time. Okay. <laughs> yes. So thank you. Thank you for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Jaya. I'm giving a talk about how to explore our potency of our food uh, as the uh, bioactive compound, as a pharmaceutical or nutraceutical. This is a lot of uh, explanation that we can see that uh, so many local, so many local, we have a huge diversity actually about the food and all can be uh, raw natural food. Uh, now it depends on how we can uh, manage that actually to find out the immune response from, from that kind of bioactive compound. Okay, now it's time for ask any question or discuss further about uh, the two topics from uh, Professor Tejasari and Professor Anujaya. I think uh, we have a few questions uh, and someone actually uh, raised hand was from the beginning, raise the hand, uh, Dr. Prana Raj, uh, before we start with the uh, written <laughs> question. Maybe <laughs> Dr. Prana Kumar, uh, is still with us? If you're still with us, and again, activate your microphone and then uh, discuss further about this to come uh, with us. If not, <laughs> I think I'm going to read the question from the audience. Yes, please. Can you, in turn, uh, pop up the question? Okay. This is the first question uh, from Hotman Manuru, University of HKBP, Namansant. I think this is in somewhere in uh, West Java. Okay. Uh, the question is addressed to Prof. Tejasari. Uh, I'm gonna read this. It turns out that almost all food contain compound that can increase immunity. In the context of COVID-19, would foods have the most potential uh, to increase our immunity? I think that's the thing. Okay, I hope Professor Tejasari got this question uh, clearly. Uh, directly, Pak. Okay. 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 <laughs> Pak Manurung, thank you for the uh, interesting question, I think. Okay, well, uh, actually, we, we need to consume uh, a variety of food. And in the context of the COVID-19, we have to uh, prioritize yeah uh, for the first defend immune system yeah so uh, we we better consume uh, food that contain high in beta carotene because the beta carotene uh, uh, directly, directly can uh, eliminate the pathogen in the first defend line of our immune system. Uh, also not, uh, but not only the food that high in carotene, but we also need to consume food high in vitamin C and vitamin E. Okay. Because, uh, and besides that, after we wash our hand, uh, hopefully the pathogen will, will remove. And however, but, but if, if the, pathogen is not removed, like virus, uh, it will uh, handle by the the other the other defense system that uh, will be increased by the carotene and vitamin C and vitamin E because this this nutrient uh, uh, can enhance uh, the non-specific immune response in the first line defense of our immune system. Is it is it answer your questions? Okay. Oh. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I think we have to wait uh, the response of uh, uh, okay. 
Okay. Um, is there any uh, feedback from the audience uh, discussing about the uh, the best food that we have to consume in order to uh, improve or boost our immune system? Is there any uh, certain food that's discussing? Okay. If not, maybe uh, the answer is uh, quite clear. Again, uh, we move to a second question. Is there any other second question? Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, from Nuruddinia. I know uh, oh. she's in Korea. Okay, the question is for uh, both Professor Tejasari and Professor Hanujaya. Okay, I'm gonna read the question. Oh. The anti-cell proliferation were increased by phenol gingerol bowel. How it can increase the immune system? Oh, I mean, the mechanism. Okay, see, so asking about the mechanism, uh -huh. how to increase the system of the phenolic from, uh, yeah, ginger or Okay. 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 Uh, the second okay. question is, is that how much wedang jahe, okay, from ginger, <laughs> should we consume to increase our immune system? And also how much bean, okay, bean, we have plenty of bean. Uh, should we consume for our immune system? Okay. Mm -mm. There's a few questions, uh, Prof. Teja and Prof. Anujaya. Uh, both of you can uh, share the answer. Okay. okay. Ibu Norodia, thank you for the answer. Uh, the ginger bioactive compound, namely ginger and cigar, uh, is a uh, Another compound that have a hydroxyl group in the structure. So this hydroxyl group uh, binding to the TCR, T cell receptor. Then this binding, the one that I saw in the in in my my share just now, yeah. Uh, the, this binding uh, in the TCR cell at the uh, uh, cell surface membrane uh, stimulate the, the enzymatic enzyme in the cell, including the protein kinase C that involved in the proliferation of the TNB cell. That's why it's increased, uh, especially the cellular uh, immune system of our body in our body. So, how much we have, we need to to consume the the jahe, the ginger, the ginger. Uh, according to my data, uh, the optimal effect of the ginger and sagal itu at the concentration 25. Uh, convert to the fresh ginger, yeah, 25 gram of ginger only. So we we don't need to to consume much of the ginger, only 25 to 50 gram, it could be 50 gram fresh ginger, but we have to consume it every day because it is uh, it will uh, affect our our immune system. Uh, if we only consume one time, it could be it cannot be uh, stimulate our immune system. So. So we need we need to put uh, about 20 to 50 gram, 25 to 50 gram of fresh ginger uh, to our our beverage becomes our jang jai. That's the the answer, Pak. Okay, thanks, uh, Prof. Tejasari, uh, Prof. Anujaya. Can we have your words? Yeah, thank Anujaya. you. Yes, I, I think uh, Prof. Tejasari should be the expert for this one because this is uh, her uh, dissertation. But uh, I want mm. to just to say something regarding with the, usually somebody always asks about how much we should take uh -huh. for the function of food. For mm. me, the answer is depend on. Of course, if we're just doing with that kind of compounds or that kind of uh, extract or just to extract itself by uh, in vitro, uh, the result will be there. But the problem when we eat something every day, it will be different. 
So we just do hope that uh, maybe that will give us the benefit, but maybe the benefit will be uh, up and down, up and down, depend on the whole the diets that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, the the principles of a functional food that we don't have those. The we can have what we call is predicted uh, functional dose, but mm -hmm. uh, we we cannot have the dose uh, for the for. <laughs> for the food because we, we eat whatever we want sometimes and not it's different with the uh nutraceutical stuff with the uh, uh for example yeah. for the um, yeah. uh supplements or for the drug something like that so uh yeah just believe that you it's okay. something better. <laughs> it's better. And if you do that one and you feel good for your body, just do it and feel happily to enjoy. Because sometimes uh, we just try to chase out <laughs> the, the concentrations and we don't enjoy the food. <laughs> so I always have a joke in my class. Uh, maybe you give us the antioxidants uh, with the functional food, but you give us stress that is more higher uh, i mean it's more higher um, antioxidant that we <laughs> we need for that one because the the stress uh, induce the oxidation <laughs> in our body because we are stressed something like so uh, don't forget to have the first the nutrition itself the second if we talk about functional food it's different if we talk about the uh, supplement nutraceutical for drugs and so on so the second mm -hmm. should be palatability and don't forget also, we have to enjoy all the food. So maybe yeah. the, the impact will be in the synergism something. And although it's not always the, the same, but at least you get something plus. That is my answer, maybe. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Anujaya, uh, for the answer, answering the question from uh, Norutunia. Okay, maybe this is the last question. Uh, is there any other question? Uh, Slums time. <laughs> okay. There's another another question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, question addressing to uh, Professor Anujaya. Uh, in order to say essential oil as an immune booster, uh -huh. should it go <clears throat> through clinical tests first? Yeah. This is the uh, technique how to approve of okay. essential oil to be immune booster. So, Professor Ani. Okay, thank you. Once again, uh, I, I have to uh, ask your apologize because my answer is cannot one plus one is two because there is so many relative things in this world. And as far as I know regarding with the activities of bounds or some food or uh, some nutraceuticals, uh, we come to the situation that maybe sometimes uh, we can uh, do uh, different kinds of approach. But uh, in, in the real world, I mean, uh, in the implementation in our daily life. But if we want to go with the scientifically proven, we have to follow the step. We have to follow the step. But for some local, sometimes, we have already comes with the what we call is the culture, the habit. And it has been proved by our daily life. For example, for the one that uh, Professor uh, Francisca said about the wedang jai, wedang, yeah, the ginger drink. We find a lot of uh, ethnic in Indonesia using that one when they have a problems with their, what we call it, uh, inflammation situation. But uh, usually they just call it maso agin, for example. When you feel the, uh, yeah, we have a lot of uh, proven, for example, when we eat a lot of sambal bawang, <laughs> we eat a lot of uh, many foods that is uh, locally known and it has been utilized to provide us to increase the immune booster in our body. But uh, that is what I call is, uh, yeah, maybe more like the, um, what you call it, the, What is in English? I just remember in Japanese. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
in, in, in the fact, I mean, uh, th that is the one that we uh, f uh, have it from everyday life. Uh, so uh, maybe what we do with this kind of functional food, we just go with what we, we call as uh, the reverse pharmacological approach with the clinical something. Yeah, so maybe it's easier because sometimes the clinical study is very expensive in Indonesia. Sometimes it's impossible for us to do that one. For example, if I do the real clinical studies uh, with my candy, uh, how many candies I should sell it to, to, to pay for the clinical, the real clinical is impossible. But if there is a kind of uh, a potential opportunity and we can have the one that uh, like now I just uh, uh, offer to Prof. Sugahara, would you please help me to go with the clinical <laughs> from the first in vitro, in vitro, and so on and so on, then maybe it's possible for us to get the, the real uh, proof, that one. So uh, yeah, we can do with a lot of approaches, but first of all, try the molecular, do uh, molecular docking first because that is cheaper. And then you can find the next step what should be done. Like my, my candy, I am my candy, sorry. The ketchup you put candies is by 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 accident. It's coming and it's now I have the, the clinical study code and code in the real world without without any notice for that one. So I will be very happy if then I can go to the real uh that's right. yeah. yes that's right. The real like uh, for okay. the, uh, activities. Like that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, from, yeah. We, we still have another question. Maybe this is the last question. From... Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> please don't hungry. <laughs> so, don't agree. <laughs> from Ibu Desi, BBTP Jambi, asking about whether uh, consuming Chaju Good Candy daily it is safe for our body or not. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I cannot see the, the, the question, but I heard from you, uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman. So the answer is, depend on how much you eat. Okay, depend on how much you eat. <laughs> yeah, and okay. how is your condition? Because you are a diabetic and you eat 200 candy put candy a day, I just <laughs> confirm you that you are maybe safe from the COVID, but you not alive anymore. <laughs> <laughs> is there any maximum daily intake? Uh, no, because this is not, uh, not uh, once again, not what we call it, um, uh, uh, drugs. Yeah? But no. we have the concentration of the ketchup put oil for ADI. That is my, in the, my, my, my slide. So as far as you eat that one, not excess, that is okay. And I do believe for this one uh, because the candy has so strong flavor. Yeah, we don't eat so much kajuput oil from the candy. But once again, please don't eat that one. For example, 200 pieces a day, <laughs> that is different. If you read regularly as like uh, another kind of candy, especially when you have very what we call urgent situation. You cannot eat anything and you, you have to boost your body uh, immunity, then maybe it works. Yeah, because of several reasons that I have in theoretically, not yet in the clinical one. Okay? okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Anujaya, for the answering the question. And I think this is already 10 past one. <laughs> <laughs> then past one, it's time to have our lunch. <laughs> okay, uh, for sure we still have plenty. Uh, well, we still have plenty of questions. Uh, uh, time is up now. It's, yeah. it's time is limited. So uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Hello. Pertanyaan bisa dijawab nanti lewat email. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then uh, I'm not going to summarize what we have been seeing with Professor Tejasari and Professor Anujaya, but uh, we can highlight that we have uh, a huge diversity of uh, 
food raw material in Indonesia and all uh, uh, potential to be uh, explored, to be exploited as uh, you know, a booster of our immune system. Okay, but uh, we still have plenty of homework, maybe homework, <laughs> to, uh, find out, to find out the mechanism and how this uh, pharmaceutical or nutraceutical or bioactive compound from our food uh, work as an immune booster. I think that's all that we can say uh, for today's uh, long discussion from morning till night. Uh, thank you very much for Professor Anujaya, Professor Dejasari, and also uh, Professor wow. yeah, Sudahara, and also Prof. Zakaria for being uh, patient with us. Uh, and also thanks to audience for the uh, enthusiasm okay, till morning now, from morning till now. Okay. Uh, we still have uh, almost 200 participants uh, wow. staying with us. Okay. We hope that our discussions will be fruitful for us to improve our uh, immune system. Uh, really. Okay. All right. Thank you very much again for the all audience. And I apologize if I got uh, some uh, when uh, chairing this session. It's uh, quite a long discussion, All right? So I return back the time to uh, Stella as uh, Master of Ceremony. Thank you very much. Uh, no oh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for the speakers for a very interesting and educative presentation and discussion. As a form of appreciation, we would like to present the certificate for the speakers. Here is a virtual certificate submission session to the speakers. <laughs> the first is an award to Professor Dr. Insignor Tijasari MSc. Thank you for your expertise in this session. And the next. Okay, the next. Okay, for the second uh, certificate is an award to Professor Dr. Insignor Christophora Hani Wijaya. Thank you for your expertise and your experience in this session. Thank you. Thank you for you too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, there's a trouble in the second, yeah. The second certificate? Already? Okay. There is a trouble, but thank you so much for okay. Professor Dr. Ingenier Chris, Christopher Rahani for your expertise and your experience. Thank you so much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, those are the agendas we presented to you, and we hope you have been enjoying yourself at this event so far. We are very honored to have with us here this afternoon, Rector of University of Jimbe, Dr. Insignia Iwan Baruna MN, Executive Director of Project Implementation Unit Islamic Development Bank, University of Jimbe, Mr. Hanes Dedi Molasi, SSMA. Professor Dr. Francisca Rungkat Zakaria, MSc from ITB University. Professor Dr. Insignor Christopher Hani Nijaya from ITB University. Professor Takuya Sugahara, PhD from Ehime University, Japan. Professor Dr. Insignor Pejasari, MSc from University of Jimbe, and also all the participants. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to inform you that participant certificates will be emailed to participants no later than a week after this event ends. Additional information, next month, there will be another webinar, please, for your next participations. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had productive and inspiring time together. 
and this event about to come to the very end. I hope you have found the presentations on this event are informative and helpful. Now we will close the international webinar. Let us all be guided by all the things we have learned and heard throughout this event and be able to see and influence our future, which roughly means please work device for our shortcomings. Till we meet again, perhaps in the next international webinar. So thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Terima kasih Mbak Dela. Terima kasih untuk para pembicara dan semuanya. Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih Bu Hani. Terus Adria Saloko juga di sini. Selalu. Tejang. Pak Jai. Ah, selamat Pak Sabuja. Ini ada yang protes, ininya kena lanina, nyambung, putus, nyambung, putus katanya. Kasih yang. Terima kasih Prof. Sinje. Ya. Sama juga. Terima kasih Bu Sinje sudah ditemani Prof. Taku ya. Untuk di kuku negara. Someone say hello to you, Prof. Sudara, from Desi. From Desi, you may remember from DPTP Jambi, Jambi. Maybe he is not here anymore. Ah, sudah enggak ada kayaknya pak. Hello to. He has another agenda after twelve. Yeah. Okay. So I have also to. Uh, yeah, because there is another meeting for uh, <laughs> yeah. PUIPT. <laughs> yeah, so I have to leave now. Uh, yeah, mohon maaf sampai ketemu uh, lagi. Yeah. Thank you all. I have a nice day. Good luck. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Ya, mas sama pak. Terima kasih semua. Mas Ferry, terima kasih. Mana? Pak Ali. Terima kasih, Prof. Teja. Terima kasih. Alhamdulillah lancar. Ya, alhamdulillah lancar. Terima kasih semua, Pak Ibu. Izin Teh. Terima kasih. Pak Misnawi, terima kasih Pak Misnawi. Kita hadir. Maybe we have to wait till Professor Sugara come to University of Jember. Yes, but he will he will come to Jember if we we will we plan the conference, katanya Pak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully next next year. Next year. For sure, we will invite you. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih sama-sama. Terima kasih. 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 Terima kas